The funeral cortege has passed the downtown intersection and is now turning by the Daily Planet building towards the plaza. And perhaps only now does a shocked city begin to come to terms with a sudden, violent loss of its most colorful figure, a hero to the common people, cut off in his prime. But who would have thought, who could have predicted, just a week ago, that today we would unite to mourn the passing of Lex Luthor and of the extraordinary events which brought us here. Faster than a speeding bullet. More powerful than a locomotive. Able to leap tall buildings at a single bound. Look, up in the sky! It's a bird! It's a plane! It's Superman! I don't believe you people. You still haven't picked a date for the wedding? No, we haven't thought that far ahead, Jim. Lois and I lead such busy lives recording for the planet. Yeah, just getting synchronized with Clark Kapop the question took forever. Oh, yeah. Anyway, we don't want to make a big deal out of this, okay? You don't? Uh-huh. Uh, Jimmy, is there a reason you dragged us back up to the newsroom when Clark could be buying you lunch? Well, sort of. Floor 50, Daily Planet Newsroom. Have a nice day. Uh, sorry, guys. I, I, I thought... Jimmy, uh, I know what you thought. There's no need to apologize. It's it's really very sweet. Come here. Oh, great. I'll get you three. Metropolis Airport Tower to aircraft approaching taxiway 39 or Please identify yourself. Over. Next swing. Next two seven to tower. Please arrange immediate clearance for runway two. Uh, Lexwing X27, we do not copy. That taxiway is unsecured for your use at this time. Please return to Lexair apron and await further instructions. Over. Lexwing X27 to tower. We're taxiing out. Now get your butt in here and arrange clearance. Over. Supervisor, please. Supervisor, over here. Hey, uh, what is it, Lomas? Some joker in the new Lexwing prototypes trying to jump the queue for 20. Lexwing to tower. I just held a press conference out here on your damn taxiway, so don't jerk me around. Over. Jeez. Uh, hold a minute, please. Lex Wing X27. Okay, Loomis, clear that flight. But this is our busiest time of day. Okay, uh, keep that 737 on four and rotate the stack. One more circuit. That'll do it. Oh, hey, uh, we can't do that to the schedules. Hell, you were the guy who told me to put a two hour hold on Air Force One last July. Loomis, that was the President of the United States. This is Lex Luthor. Lex Luthor? He's the pilot? You waiting for a proposal of marriage? Or do you want your obituary in tomorrow's Daily Planet? Uh, uh, uh Lexwing X27, you're cleared for immediate takeoff, runway 20. Congratulations, Lois! Oh, thank you, Allie! That's one way to eliminate the competition, Clark. It's Mario! Oh, come on, guys. I'm concentrating on feature work these days. Besides, I don't expect Lois to give up her career. Oh, yeah? <laughs> She's finally forgiving you for all the exclusives you beat her to on Superman? <laughs> Turn it to the kitchen sink, pal. That's my advice. Oh, oh, come on. My parents work side by side in the same job, and farming's a lot harder than newspaper work. Not working for Perry White today. Oh, see, where is Perry, anyhow? Our noble editor is getting some guy from Newstime Magazine a third degree. Hey, Jimmy. Oh, yeah. Jimmy. I'm not too late for the food, am I? Yay! Perish for beer. Hey, Clark Lois, congratulations. Oh, thanks. thanks. Thanks a lot. Say, you heard the rumor about Lex Luthor? Huh? That the radiation from the kryptonite ring he had made to scare off Superman wasn't harmless like you thought? I heard he was getting cancer treatment for it. Well, looks like that story was all hot air. Aren't many dying men who set out to break speed records, right? What? He flew out this morning from Metropolis International. I lucked into the press conference he gave by the new Lex Week. Guess I scooped you all! <laughs> this flight, he's making it alone? Ah, I got a co-pilot. Test jockey called Nick Buxton. It's good. Uh, all the same, it's years since Lex Luthor flew one of his own aircraft. What's he trying to prove? We're over the Caribbean already, Mr. L. Uh, maybe I should take the controls now. You look a little tired. You check our heading, Mr. Buxton. I'll fly the Lex Wing. You sure you're feeling okay? You know, there's been a lot of talk. Oh, that I'm a dying man, Nick. I have just a few months left to live. Well, it's none of my business. If that were true, my friend. If. Do you think I'd want to spend my remaining time waiting for the inevitable to happen? To give up on living... Withdraw like a beaten animal? No. No. Not without some final gesture. Not without giving the world something to remember. Mm, look at that sea down there. So inviting. And the islands are especially lovely at this time of year. 
You should spend some time down there. Maybe one day. Why wait? Huh? Give my regards to Sequa. Hey! That's the check! Now, let's see what this baby can really do. So what did he do? Go down on one knee and all that? No, not exactly, Ellie. I mean, the restaurant was kind of crowded. That ring is something else, though. Hey, Clark! I love this ring! Where'd you find it? It belonged to my mom's family. No, I like Planet that. Newsroom. WLEX News Agency reports that the flight of the X-27 Lexwing is believed to have ended in tragedy. Wow. The Lexwing has apparently crashed near a remote mountain village some 200 miles north of Lima, Peru. I was there for the takeoff not an hour ago. I can't believe it. God, I can't even... Hey, Clark, do you think... Clark? You want Clark, Lois? He just took the elevator. Going up? There are faster ways of leaving the building than using the elevator. But until I can decide whether I should tell Lois the truth about myself, I have to be very careful. Roof level. Planet globe. Observation deck. Watch your step. Even if it looks as if this is a job... For Superman. Later today on WGBS Metropolis, The Cat Grant Show. I'm Catherine Grant, and today we are looking into the phenomenal wave of rumored sightings of the late Lex Luthor following his death in Peru six weeks ago. The aircraft he was piloting, the Lexwing X-27, was completely destroyed when it hit the mountainside. First person at the crash site was Superman, and he'll be telling us what he found there. The aircraft must have really been traveling when it hit. My X-ray vision revealed the fragments of what used to be the pilot's seat. Whatever happened, it was never ejected. There wasn't much left of it, or of the man who wrote it down. But is there enough evidence to definitely establish the body as that of Lex Luthor? We'll be revealing the results of tests carried out by two independent laboratories, that of Metropolis's own Professor Emil Hamilton and a special government research facility. That's the Cat Grant Show, with me, Catherine Grant, only on WGBS. It all checks out, Mr. Westfield. This tissue sample most definitely matches our reported genetic profile for Lex Luthor. In that case, have Guardian summoned. He can take our findings to Metropolis. Uh, better send for double X2. We should really... Ah, our esteemed project administrator. Guardian, how did you know... Mr. Westfield, you required our presence. <laughs> Your extrasensory perception is quite remarkable, double X. It was genetically engineered that way. Of course, of course. Guardian, these findings need safe delivery to the WGBS building in Metropolis. Are we working for the media these days, Westfield? The president is very concerned to scotch the rumors that Lex Luthor survived that air crash. With no one currently controlling the LexCorp empire, the financial markets are belly up worldwide. We can preserve the secrecy of our cloning work here at the Cadmus Project and still help lay Luthor's ghost. A curious business. The mental impressions I received from Lex Luthor were not those of a potential suicide. He was a sick man, Double X. Desperate. The kryptonite ring he had made to keep Superman away from him. For short periods of exposure, it was perfectly harmless to human tissue. But over several years, it never left his hand. The cumulative effect was disastrous. He killed himself with a substance he hoped to use to destroy Superman. How very ironic. Westfield, I can't help being aware of your thoughts. They worry me. Westfield? What is Double X picking up? None of your business. So long as your interest in Superman remains speculative, Westfield, but that surge of curiosity you just felt as to his genetic potential fills me with a cold dread. Professor Hamilton! A do drop in, Superman! The window's open! Good afternoon, I... Superman! How good to see you! Good to see me? By putting me flat on my keister? Yes. The motion detectors are still rather sensitive. But on the whole, the intruder deterrent works rather well, don't you think? Well, any regular intruder would have been hospitalized for a week after that. That is why I tested it on you. Ah, uh, yes. Now, what I really... Whoa! What the heck is that? Laser cannon. I finally came up with a synthetic prism to quadruple the focusing ratio. Optically flawless. It got quite a kick, hasn't it? Yeah. Uh, who are you working on that for? Nobody. The idea just intrigued me. Well, if it's all the same to you, I'd be as happy if you didn't test all your latest inventions out on me. Uh, this is a fresh cake. Uh, but I thought you'd come to view the finished data. Data? On the Luther tissue sample? Oh, that. That all checked out. You're sure the remains I found were Luthor's? Yes, yes. Uh, 
Examination of skeletal fragments indicated a male Caucasian approximately 5 foot 9 to 5 foot 10 tall. The DNA match for the LexCorp sample was a perfect tally, and the chromosomes twin down to the last double Y. The body in the aircraft was Lex Luthor. He's dead as mutton. Thank you. I'll get that over to WGBS right away. Uh, wait a moment. What about the other data? Oh, the data we compiled in my powers? Yes, your physical. Oh, it's... Uh, just take a look at this. Oh. Uh, now, while I've been unable to determine the exact cellular mechanism, uh, there's something in your Kryptonian physiology which stores and channels solar energy. So, it's like we thought. Mm. I'm essentially a living solar capacitor, and my body's converted all the energy I've stored over the years, amplifying my senses, boosting my strengths, and so on. Mm, exactly. It's our sun which has made a Superman of you. So if my home planet had never exploded, if I'd grown up on Krypton, I'd have been no more super under its red sun than you are in Earth's solar system. Quite. Uh, but although your body holds vast energy reserves, they're not inexhaustible. Uh, see here. Mm -hmm. This represents a recent 24-hour period during which you towed a disabled Amtrak train through the Rockies, flew several tons of food and medical supplies into Central Africa, repositioned a falling communication satellite, and thwarted an attempted terrorist bomb in Rome. I remember. At the end of that day, the readings I took showed a noticeable energy deficit. And by then, you were drawing heavily on your body's energy reserves. The greater the expenditure, the weaker you would have become. Eventually, the bioelectric aura, which accounts for much of your body's invulnerability, would begin to break down. Well, what do you mean, Professor? Sustained use of my superpowers could weaken me? Your body is resilient, but uh, overtax its resources and you could find yourself in mortal danger. Uh, I'll bear that in mind. Of course, this equipment can only provide the roughest of approximations when it comes to measuring the limits of your power. Now, if I had an opportunity to use the equipment in that wondrous Antarctic fortress of yours... Hmm. The fortress. Strange. I don't think of it as mine. Hardly surprising. The Eradicator built it. What a feat of artificial intelligence that was. The Eradicator. Yeah. Well, thank goodness we finally managed to disperse his energy field. An artifact from your home planet, programmed to preserve all things Kryptonian. Under different circumstances, he could have taught us so much. The Antarctic Fortress is his legacy. Maybe it's time I went back there. Attention, Perry White. Here is the last part of my feature article, The Luther Effect, for Friday's supplement. New paragraph. Meanwhile, the lights burn late in the LexCorp Tower, the canted glass roof of its penthouse apartment creating the familiar huge letter L over Metropolis. L for Lair. This is where the late Lex Luthor secreted himself to plot his corporation's multinational conquest. L for Liability. Much of his empire is in danger of crumbling now he is gone, and will take the world's money markets with it. And L for... Legacy. Is there an heir to this vacant throne? What secrets did Lex Luthor take to his grave? Only the lights which burn late in the LexCorp Tower could illuminate our fumblings for answers, but, as always, they shine on in silence. Hope this is okay, Perry. Patch you in the morning. Lois. Mm. Yes. I'm not being poetic about the light spinning light at LexCorp. Take a look out of your office window. Save Colin. Send to Perry White, editor's office. This is it. We can't go in there. I'm sure we can. And I think there gotta be some perks to being a junior attorney for LexCorp, especially when we just worked an 18 hour day. Oh, holy cow. Look at the size of his office. Oh, but Mr. Lou, his, his office is supposed to be sealed up. What if Mr. Happerson comes in? Yeah, Happerson's in the Galapagos Islands, for Pete's sake. Besides, Lex Luthor's death has left this place in such a mess. I mean, if he knew he only had a few months to live. What do you mean? It's our job to keep half of Lex Corp out of probate. Luthor's seven ex-wives alone could probably... Please, let's do whatever it is you want to do and get back downstairs, huh? What are we doing in his office? What are we looking for? His will. What? Now, this computer terminal is the master for the whole LexCorp system. Oh, God! Of course, there'll be a password. Oh, what the hell could it be? I feel sick. Good morning, Mr. Luther. Ha! I don't believe it. What? <laughs> no password needed. <laughs> I do believe you've lost a pound or two. No password. Guess Luther thought nobody would dare access this terminal. <laughs> would you care to use voice command or keypad? Keypad? Eh, the one screw up a voice print I did. He thinks you're Luther? So far, yes. <laughs> 
Your massage music, sir? Shall I summon today's masseuse? Cut it. Can we get out of here? Okay, okay, let's just uh, try this. Access W-I-L-L. I, Lex Luthor, do hereby make, publish, and declare my last will and testament. Can you see what I see? Oh, my gosh. This is for real. It changes everything. Do you wish a complete reading of the will? Yes. Why a complete reading Luthor will? I, Lex Luthor, leave my entire empire. To. Next week. Careful where you stamp on that snow, will you? Next week? I tell you, man, that hole in the ozone layer up there is going to do what it likes, whether we monitor it or not. I want to go home. This place is for the penguins. What's your problem? Oh. Get your butt frozen to the can again? I swear I saw something through the blizzard. Mm-hmm. A blue flash. Then a kind of impact or a noise, like something burrowing down through the ice. Yeah, uh-huh. I'll tell you what that was. What? Your imagination getting frostbite. Yeah. You'll find the cure in my bag. Oh, and pour me one while you're getting it, will you? <laughs> what am I doing here? This is your fortress of solitude, Master. We robots are here to serve you. Perhaps you came to refresh your memories of Krypton. You may wish to inspect the Kryptonian war suit we have rebuilt from original designs. It can be operated remotely from this panel. I'm sure it's very impressive, but... Great Scott! This walking action looks spasmodic, but riding inside it should be quite comfortable. It is fully pressurized, and... I don't need a war suit. This is not Krypton. We are on Earth. I am invulnerable here. As you wish, Master. Although, this suit is very similar to a weapon once used against me by Lex Luthor. When I first arrived in Metropolis, first met Lois. Perhaps it will come in useful as a weapon against your enemies. No, no, Lex Luthor is dead, I think. Master, in some ways, Lex Luthor was the least of those who have opposed you. Have you forgotten Darkseid, ruler of Apocalypse? What of the alien tyrant Mongol? His war world was destroyed, but logic dictates he would seek to build a new engine of destruction to revenge himself on you. Who is to say he has not found a suitable planet for the purpose? But these malefactors, the rulers kill or be killed. I don't work that way. It was when I was held captive by Mongol that I first realized I must never take life. No matter how evil. This war suit is a relic, even by Kryptonian standards. It belongs to a barbaric past. We are programmed to preserve Krypton's heritage. That is why we maintain this fortress for you, Master. You are the last son of Krypton. The Eradicator built us to serve you, to remind you of your heritage. You must understand, I was not born on Krypton. I was born in Kansas, when Martha and Jonathan Kent lifted me from the birthing matrix, the egg, which carried me to Earth. I had no idea the Eradicator built this place. So let's not talk of Krypton's heritage. This is a tomb. A cold, sterile tomb. But I need warmth. Human emotion. Yes. Now I realize there can't be any secrets. Not anymore. Master, we are confused. Please explain. This place gives me the willies. I'm out of here. This is LexCorp senior scientist, Dang Hui. There is not much time left to me. I only hope this recording can survive the destruction of this installation. Our experiment is complete. And, and this is the reward we reap. But perhaps it was to be expected. Now, let's see what this baby can really do. Lex Luthor's last flight in the Lex Wing was a carefully arranged subterfuge. After ejecting his co-pilot, Luthor set the controls to autopilot and turned to a special compartment in the aircraft where his body double had been stowed. This, unfortunate, was a clone I had created in the Hong Kong laboratories. Biologically, a match for Luthor in every detail. Placing the double in his pilot's seat, and setting the controls to ensure a crash, Luther departed the Lexwing in a secret escape module. As the Lexwing crashed, Luther's henchman, Dr. Sidney Happerson, picked him up from the Pacific Ocean. He was flown here. 
to the secret installation we had built in the Australian outback, where Dr. Dabney Donovan and I were waiting. Well done, Dr. Donovan. Was this charade in vain? Mr. Luther, we can't argue with the diagnosis of your metropolis physician. The radiation from the kryptonite ring you wore has had an irreversible effect. The lymphatic system is now beyond hope. We cannot delay much longer, Mr. Luther. Oh, let's do it. I administered the anesthetic myself. Then Donovan and I went about our bloody business. Luther's death was now indeed a reality, in that the life had left his body. But now, phase two of our operation began, for we had saved his brain. Of necessity, we kept him unconscious for days. The awakening was quite disorienting for him, even though he had been warned what to expect. Mr. Luther, can you hear us? Are the cerebral cortex sensors attached? Yes, yes. And the voice box. Now, Mr. L. I can hear you. What is wrong with my voice? It is electronic, Mr. Luther. We had to lose the larynx. Correct. Over the following weeks, we developed an accelerated means of growing a new body around the brain. We watched Luther grow from embryo to adulthood, suspended in a vast tank of pseudo-amniotic fluid. Throughout that time, his brain remained active. Incredibly. He took part in directing our efforts. As you requested, Mr. Luther, we played a bit with the genetic detailing. You'll be taller, stronger. Yes, 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 but the hair. What about the hair? It will be much thicker. We specifically targeted the baldness chromosome. You won't need to worry. While our work was progressing, legal papers were being altered to accommodate events. Haberson brought Luther's personal physician, a Dr. Kelly, over from the States, just before a will was found, naming her as the mother of a son they'd born in secret. Dr. Kelly, this is the new Lex Luther, your son. Oh, my God. Uh, sorry, we had to keep you in the dark up till now. Oh, oh my God! <laughs> oh, please, no! I understand that she and Luther were once lovers. Uh, perhaps she loved him still. Uh, but in the meantime, our work had reached fruition. Pulse, check. Respiration, check. Reflexes, check. How do you feel, Mr. Luther? I, uh, I feel good. And strong. And that's fair, Dinkum. Weeks of sleep teaching tapes had given him the accent appropriate to his place of birth. Not a bit crook at all. We had given him the body of a young man, fit, muscular. The world would consider him Luther and Kelly's son, but Donovan and I knew his true origins. As he left our facility to reclaim his empire, the corporation he had willed to himself, he left us proof that he was indeed the Luther we knew of old. A dozen demolition charges have, have destroyed this installation. I don't believe Donovan survived the first blast. My legs are broken. I'm losing blood. I only hope this tape is found after this carnage. That there is somebody somewhere who will avenge our deaths and stand against the evil we have created. Oh, Clark, the popcorn's popped. Oh. Clark? Well, as long as we're coming up for air. How much did you put in here? Lois, there's something I've been wanting to tell you. Yeah, you're secretly addicted to popcorn, right? Well, there's something you should know about me if we're going to marry. No, let me guess. You snore, right? No, no, look. <laughs> you should know that... Well, I've made a lot of enemies over the years. Mm -hmm. Being married to me may not be the safest thing in the world. Hey, Clark, you're not the only one who's rubbed people the wrong way to get a story. I can handle it. I love you. Oh, and I love you, but... Oh, this isn't easy to talk about. I can see that. Ever since you arrived tonight, it's been like... Like you're someone else. Even your lips felt cold when we kissed. Did you ever have a secret, one you'd kept for so long, that when you did finally confide in someone, you were afraid they'd take it the wrong way? Did I? Clark, you wouldn't believe some of the stunts I pulled as a kid. I've never told a living soul. <laughs> My father knew some of the stuff I'd... Boy, 
I'd rather keep it quiet. Thank you very much. It's okay. I'm not asking you to tell me, but there is something I have to tell you. Something you must know before we marry. Clark? What is it? Are you ill? Lois, for the past few years, I've led a double life. Lois, I'm Superman. <laughs> Using the name you gave me after I was forced to use my powers in public to prevent the crash of that experimental space plane. Clark, be serious. I see you every day at the planet. Nobody could just change into Superman at the drop of a hat. I can. Oh, my God. Lois, I am Superman. Wow. You, uh, okay with this? <sighs> okay? That the man I promised to marry is an alien from another planet? Or the times I've spent trying to figure out your your erratic behavior over the past few years? Heck, I don't know. It's like a puzzle that makes sense because the missing piece is finally put in place. In my heart, I, I think I've known for a long time. My brain would always dismiss the notion. I'm sorry. I didn't mean to shock you. Are you kidding? I've never felt so relieved in all my life. young lady who came to us as a stranger from a dying world. Clark, you're missing it! Oh, damn it, and the video's on the fridge. Mm. Supergirl, dedicating her life and amazing powers to the pursuit of truth, justice, and the American way. Missing what, Lois? Mm -hmm. Supergirl, who has joined the LexCorp family to serve as a proud member of Team Luther. Oh God, I don't believe it. Good day. I'm Lex Luther II. This Luthor kid's full of surprises. Clark, you, you know about this? About Supergirl, yes. About what she's doing there, no. But now, just as Superman came to Earth from another planet, so too did this lovely young lady come to us, the sole survivor of a dying world. A parallel world. She was created in homage to a doppelganger of me. But that's a different story. Mm. Did you see that truck just then? Huh? The look in her eyes when Luther moved near her? I'd say she was pretty taken with him. That was a special announcement sponsored by LexCorp, the Metropolis family business. Lex Luthor II. Ever since he came to Metropolis, he's charmed everybody in sight. He's restored the fortunes of LexCorp, mm. and by doing so, put the city back on its feet. And yet, he disturbs me in a way his father never did. Clark, he's nothing like his father, believe me. If I were you, I'd worry about this bimbo flying around in your costume. Supergirl? Well... She's not all she seems, Lois. She's got a secret identity? I mean, like, like you can be you or you can be Superman? Well, in a way. In a way, she can be anyone she wants. She, it... It? ...was created in a lab from synthetic protomatter. Mm. Her natural appearance is humanoid, but without definition or gender. Supergirl is a biological matrix, a shapeshifter. That's why Ma and Pa called her May. Ma, your parents know her? Well, yeah, she lived with them for a while. She knows that I'm Superman. This could be bad. This could be very bad. Suicide slum looks pretty from a thousand feet up today. It's enough to make anyone forget their troubles. Hi, kids. Don't talk to any strangers now. Kids. Wow, something else to think about. Whoa, Clark. Gotta walk before you can run. Haven't set a date with Lois for the wedding yet. 
Well, all seems quiet in the city this morning. I better head for the planet before she beats me to the office. Hey, hey, Pete, did you see that? I think it was Superman. Superman? I'm so tired, I can't even see where to put these rivets. As soon as we finish this section, I'm quitting for the day. Yeah, you've been working 20 hours straight, man. Hell, Lex Corp don't need another skyscraper that fast. Yeah, but I need the overtime. Hey, Henry! Henry Johnson! Yo! Pass me a number 14, will ya? Sure. You need a hammer? Man, the size of that guy. Ah, I can reach this one here. Boy, does that guy remind me of the story about John Henry the Steel Driver. Hey, hey, Pete, we're 53 stories up. Clip up your safety line before you reach out for... He is the pound steel drills in the rock that... <laughs> oh, oh, oh. I can't hold them! Wait, I'm coming over. I can't... <laughs> oh, oh, gotcha. oh, oh, man, I don't believe oh. it. I don't believe yeah. you did that. Arrow Flynn, man. You, you, you swung oh. in and you caught him just like that. Hell, I was lucky I grabbed his cable. Henry, if I don't get up, don't fall on it! Oh, God! Gotcha. Superman. Relax. You're gonna be all right. You. You. Easy does it. Up we go. I saw how you helped your friend just now. You took a much bigger risk than I just did. Oh, Superman. How can I repay you? I owe you my life. To make it count for something. So long. Henry! I thought you were the gunner, but you Yeah, right. I was a gunner. A dead man. But Superman gave me a second chance at life. And I won't blow it this time. I'll find a way to pay him back. Somehow. Lucky I took a last look over my shoulder before changing outfits. But that construction worker would have hit before I reached him. Heck of an impressive looking guy, though. Driving rivets must be... Room up here for two? Whoa! Supergirl! We need to talk. Sure, Clark. Please don't use that name when I'm wearing this uniform. For all I know, Luthor may have pinned a listening device on it. Listening device? Lex would never use such things. <sighs> you didn't know his father. Look, what are you saying? Only that you should be careful about entering into any relationships with Luthor. Oh, don't be silly. Lex is the kindest, most wonderful man. I know that's been the general impression, and he might well be everything he seems. But how much do any of us really know about him? His father hid a lot behind a benevolent public face. Why, Superman, are you jealous? Of course not. I don't want to see you hurt, May. I can look after myself. My psychokinetic abilities may not compare to your superpowers over long periods, but I can hang tough. That's not what I meant. You've got to be very careful with Luthor, with what you confide in him. I get it. If you're worried I might have told him about your double life. You haven't. Don't worry. I've kept your precious secret. No one will ever learn it from me. Damn it. Damn it. Damn it. Mr. Luthor, there was no way we could have pinned a bug on her costume. And not without her knowing. Scanning room. Uh, but Mr. Luthor, they're out of range of the, the marks within seconds. Damn it! What's the point of having to pet superhero when you can't even eavesdrop on the conversation? <laughs> Mr. Luther, there's plenty of time to nail Superman. Time. Time, Apperson? You forget. I'm a 50-year-old brain in the body of a young man. I don't intend to wear out a second body before I put Superman in his grave. Now, just because we've lucked into finding this girl from nowhere, don't think I'm not going to play her for all she's worth. Uh, yes, sir. <laughs> but I counsel caution. He's heading towards the penthouse window. Sex? Leave us, Harrison. Of course, Mr. Luther. So, love, how's your friend Superman today? Grouchy, not like you. <laughs> you know, I'm very proud you've decided to join Lex Corp to be with me. There's nowhere else I want to be. Ever since I first saw you, looked into your eyes, I've not wanted to be with anyone else. My darling Lex, how can I make you happy? Just looking at you in that costume makes me happy. Mm. Mitchell Anderson, what are you wearing? Uh, you mean this, miss? It's just a t-shirt. Well, turn it around or something. That face makes me feel very ill. What's wrong with Lobo, anyhow? Okay, class. As you know, we are taking time out from our usual lessons to watch a very special TV debate. Oh, I mean, is this what we got to sit through for the rest of the day? I want to see some action. Action? Mitch, you know that nothing exciting ever happens around here. Yeah. <laughs> God, what was that? It must have been ten feet. Oh. Hey, you people all right? We are, but further up by the turnpike, I think there's people dead up there. It was huge, wearing these steel ropes, like it had been tied up. 
but it had got one hand free, smashing everything in its path. Unit 27, call it in. Come in, please. It had green rubber restraints on, red goggles. Uh, 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 you couldn't see a face. It was filthy, like it had been buried alive. Yeah, yeah sure. Uh, the knuckles on the hand were showing. The glove was ripped. It's got bones yeah. sticking out of its skin like, like stalactites. Uh-huh. Unit 27. Uh, we found it. It's on the turnpike heading northeast. Tore through a line of traffic here not ten minutes ago. It, it's still traveling in a straight line, but God knows where. Uh, unit 32 has gone up to assess its casualties. Do I follow it or, or what? Uh, unit 32 is reporting at least five dead and a dozen injured. Stay with them till the paramedics arrive, then continue pursuit at a safe distance. Uh, stay behind the Justice League. They're about to head it off. The Justice League? Huh? Yeah, they'll tear that mother apart. You got it. Out. Like whatever it is is about to be stopped in its tracks, but good. I don't know. I'm not sure anyone alive could stop that thing if it didn't want to be stopped. Hey, lady, we're talking the Justice League here. America's finest sanctioned heroes. Ain't no one gonna oppose them. The Justice League. We have federal law enforcement. We have a National Guard. Just who exactly are these vigilantes that we sit back and permit them to take the law into their own hands? Who could condone inadequates who hide behind such grotesque identities as Booster Gold, Ice, Fire, Bloodwind, and God help us, the Blue Beetle? And as for the discredited member of the Green Lantern Corps, this Guy Gardner, what kind of example is he to our nation's youth? Join me, Jack Ryder, at the usual time tonight when I'll be putting the Secretary of the Interior into the hot seat. And now on WGBS, we go live to a very special venue in Metropolis to join Cat Grant. We're coming to you live from Roosevelt High with an incredible show. Hey, our kid around here. No, he had to go out, Jimmy. Oh, hi, Lois. Uh, he is perhaps Say, you heard those stories? There's some monster wrecking half of Ohio? So far, they're unsubstantiated rumor, Jim. Now, can I watch this or what? Okay, okay. Who's today's guest, anyway? Superman. Wow. Superman. Welcome to the show. Please have a seat. Thank you, Miss Grant. Uh, can I take your cape? <laughs> if it's all the same, I wouldn't feel dressed without it. <laughs> I can't thank you enough for joining us here, Superman. I've always felt that if Americans are trusted... Uh, yes, Hatterson? I think you want to take a look at the news program on our Ohio network, Mr. Luther. It's on number eight. Thank you, Hatterson. Ohio? Don't we have an oil refinery there? Let's turn to our audience here at Roosevelt High. Uh, over here. Your name is... Uh... Uh, Kenny, I was wondering, uh, what do you superheroes do like when you're not bashing up bad guys? <laughs> well, that's an interesting question. No, I, I mean, like, do you get to party all the time or, or what? A cut! Sorry, folks, we've just been taken off the air for a network special report. Sounds like trouble in Ohio. Can you put it on the speakers? Uh, sure, Superman. A report of the Justice League mapping a large creature in an electro refinery in Ohio. Report that it had cast among the... Superman? I have to go. Excuse me. There have been explosions at the Lexoil refinery on the edge of town, where the Justice League have attempted to head off what has been described as a large creature, which has cut a swathe across the state. Apparently, it's been reported that the Blue Beetle is critically wounded, and other members of the hero group have been forced to make a tactical withdrawal. If it is true... If this is true, somebody's got a fight on their hands. Let me go take a look, Lex. I could find out what's happening. Uh, no, you stay, love. If that something comes this way, I want Supergirl here. Mitch, dear, is that you? Home sweet home. No, nah, it's Axel Rose in the band. What's that, hon? <laughs> Nothing. Help yourself to the fridge. Hey, what happened to all the soda? How is school? Like you care. Of course I care. Say, wasn't today the day Superman was due to dress high school students on TV? Yeah, except the super weasel was called away on some case, so he bailed early. Mm. They should have got Guy Gardner. Now he's bad. Why do we just run out of soda around here anyway? Why don't you ever buy enough to last? Oh, Mitchell, I am sorry, but your little sister isn't well. I didn't get time to go to the store. Dad always has soda for me at his new apartment. <laughs> no wonder he left. Oh, Mitch. I'm going over to Aaron's. Joey was right. Nothing ever happens around here. 
We interrupt this program for an important oh, announcement. Residents of the Timber Lake area are advised to evacuate their homes as quickly as possible. Oh, Superman and the Justice League are attempting to subdue a creature which is rampaging across the wow. state. And the battle is moving into your part of town. Oh, really? Don't wait for a ringside seat. This thing's already wiped out a couple dozen people and at least one superhero. <laughs> Mitchell, I want you to call 911. Hurry! Mom, I'm driving the car! Oh my god! What's that? Check it out! Mitchell, please get away from the door! Trap the car with one hand tied behind its back! And it's heading this way! Oh. What do I do? Wait! Look! Up in the sky! It's Superman! That's Booster Gold and the Justice League with him! I told you, Superman! This thing! It's like Doomsday is here! What was it you called him, Booster? Oh, yeah. Doomsday. <laughs> oh! That punch looked like it could have caved in a mountain, and Superman took it! No big deal! The spud was too slow and stupid to duck. Didn't that hurt? Yeah, a little. He's fast. Oh! Very fast! Superman, he's in for the house! My baby! Not my baby! Mom! No! Back off! Get your family out of here, ma'am. I'll cover your escape as long as I can. You won't be alone, Suits. The cavalry is on the scene. Wow, the rest of the Justice League. Bloodwind, fire, even Guy Gardner. Man, a big blue. I think the tough people for you. Guy, that monster might be too tough for all of us. No way, fire. I say we hit him with all we got. Bloodwind? Absolutely. All our power be in a concentrated blast. Superman? Do it! <laughs> Mitch, we've got to get out of here. I'm getting tired. Me too, Fire. My power cells are about shot. Brain. Okay, keep it up, Red. There's no way to they can still be standing. Incredible. He took all that energy without missing a beat. What do we do now? We're exhausted, and Doomsday is coming. Oh, Mitch, now's our chance. We've got to move. Hey, Mom. Mom, I think I smell gas. One of the lines to the house must have ruptured. Hey, you guys. Nobody was in it. Bloodwind! Booster! Anybody? Am I the only person left standing around here? No. Doomsday's still standing. What's it doing? It seems as if it were about to... take off! Great Scott! It flies! No! It jumped! Maybe I can gain the upper hand. The sky is my element! Mom! Becky! Oh, man! Something. The fire surrounded us. I'll never get her out of here. There's no one to help. Got to stop this thing. It's heading straight for the problems. And if it can leap like this, it'll be there in a few hours. But what is this creature? Where's it from? What does it want? Please! Gotta hear me! It's that boy from the house. He had gotten away. I can't turn back. Not now I'm on Doomsday's tail. Damn it. Got the upper hand. May not get a second chance. Not in my own element. Super. What's going on again from the smoke? The mom and the baby are going to die if I can't get help. Superman fucked out on us. Bitch. Let's all get out of here. Superman! I thought you were coming back! I'm full of surprises. Now, let's get you all out of here. This is a GBS news break. I'm Steve Lombard. The destructive creature now called Doomsday, which has left over a hundred dead and many more injured, including members of the Justice League, is on a straight path crossing from Ohio through New York State. The monster appears to be heading straight to, or through, Metropolis. After his short break earlier today, when he rescued a family from a burning house, Superman has remained on Doomsday's tail, and the two of them have been duking it out across country. 
Doomsday appears to cover miles in fast leaps, his last known landing place being the city's western suburbs. We'll keep you posted. Anything giving Superman that hard a fight must be incredibly powerful. I must go and help him, Lex. Listen, love, the last thing we need now is for you to go flying off. Whenever Superman's away, the local citizenry start getting edgy. And with the hero having a bust up with some ugly drongo, the city needs its Supergirl to fill the void. Whatever you wish, Lex. After all, it sounds like the fight is coming to us anyway. It's down to me. Is that what I can hear? I thought it was a thunderstorm. This is not getting any easier. Just hit him, Doomsday hurts. It doesn't seem any weaker than when we began this morning. I could really use some help, but the JLA is incapacitated, and there's no sign of Supergirl. This up. Never felt this tired. I only wish Lois could get clear of all this. That's an eighty planet chopper up there. She's bound to be in it. No time to think of that. Gotta take the initiative here. my lucky year. Those were some of the best shots I've ever taken. Fred, are you ready for a new power drop? Go ahead, Lois. The monster called Doomsday abandoned the furrow of destruction he had plowed through Ohio and western New York State. Harried at every opportunity by Superman, the creature tore through Metropolis' suburbs. At one point, Doomsday's rampage in Park Ridge was cut short when Superman momentarily overpowered him, rocketing him up toward the vacuum of space. But the agility and strength of the creature was such that he evaded the Man of Steel's grip and fell back to Earth. Hold it, friend. I'm trying to see where they're going to land. Hold oh, it. I can see them. Coming down towards the planet building. Oh, no! Oh, Joe, try this thing over the planet building. They're fighting right outside our front door. Doomsday! Your rampage ends here. Metropolis is where I draw the line. Rocky, <laughs> can't believe this thing isn't feeling as bad as I am. Gotta try to bring it down. Even if it kills me. Please, Maggie, I've arrested some perps in my time, but this is one ugly sucker. You're a master of understatement, Inspector Turpin. All units in position! Nail the son of a... Jeez, the SC unit are firing at that thing with everything they've got, and it's not even stopping! I don't like this! Can't we get any closer? Damn, should have brought my other limb. Jimmy, we're close enough as it is, and the GPS chopper's right on our tail! We don't want to... We got a collision, folks! Hang on! We're going down! What did we get? It's me, Jimmy. The other helicopter's okay, but I've got to get you out of the way of that thing. Holy cow! The special crime unit are in full retreat from Doomsday. It's unstoppable. Lois, quickly, behind this wreckage. we got to talk. Clark, you need help. Jimmy's right. Just whatever happens, I'll always love you. Clark, Clark, you got to see reason. But now... Doomsday gets his? No! Wait! Hey, you! Get away from that thing! Sorry, Captain Sawyer. I'll never get another shot like this again. Nobody tears up my city and gets away with it. Yay! You tell him, Superman. And you got reinforcements. Need a little help? No. Wait. We need a strategy. What is this thing? Kind. Jimmy! Jimmy, what happened? Uh, I don't know. One minute that thing was Supergirl, then Doomsday sucked it, and it turned into silly putty. Oh, 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 wow! There must be something we can do to help! I don't think so, Lois. Doomsday just buried Superman in the sidewalk, and now he's 
coming for us! No more, you can't, Jimmy! I'll distract him while you run! Too late! It's not Doomsday! If you want to get your hands on my friends, you're gonna have to kill me first! Then while you're recovering from that, try a little heat vision! What is he? What does he want? He wants destruction and death. But to stop him, you will have to be every bit as ferocious as unrelenting! But you can't! He wants to kill, and you can! Oh, God! Oh, oh these bony protrusions erupting from his skin. He got me. I must take him down. Everybody stand back! If those bones are extensions of a skeleton, let's try this! Yes, I heard him this time! Jimmy! Jimmy, I can't look! I can't! Lois, forgive me! I have to shoot this! It's gonna end in seconds! It has to! This is it. We're both dead in everything we got on this one. Like weary boxers who have gone the distance, the combatants collided in one last explosive effort. In the years to come, a few witnesses will tell of the power of these punches, that they could literally feel the shockwaves. Others will remember the enormous crater that resulted from the sheer force of the blows. Most will remember this sad day as that on which the proudest, most noble man they ever knew finally fell. But for those who would be his friend, those who would call him son, those who loved him, it is too late. Please hang on. The paramedics will be here any second. Doomsday. Is he? Is he? You stopped him. You saved us all. Now, now be still. And talk. <sighs> no. Oh, no. No! Let's get organized here. You two, keep that shock cannon pointed at the doomsday creature. The rest of you get a cordon around this area. Well, Doctor? Pulse, nil. Respiration, nil. Pupils fixed and dilated. Sorry, Captain Sawyer, I'm declaring Superman dead as of 623 Metropolis time. Oh, no, no, he's alive. He's got to Miss be. Miss Lane, you're in shock. Let me have Inspector Turpin call you a cab home. Maggie, we couldn't get a cab within a block of here. Let's face it. There ain't no street left after Superman went one-on-one -on -one with that monster. Yeah. Hey, Chumpley, sir, keep that cannon safety catch off, will you? Yes, sir, Inspector Turpin. Oh, man, if Superman's really dead, we better pray to God he took this doomsday thing down for keeps. Uh, I'm gonna poke it with my gun. You guys cover me, okay? okay. Do it. Uh, doesn't look like he's breathing, but maybe it never needed to. Whoa, oh, did it move? The debris shifted, I think. Yeah, that's what it was. Sheesh, oh, but if you want to see something weird, look over there by the captain. Huh? What in the name of God is that? Maggie Sawyer, order your special crimes unit to back away from the creature Doomsday. Holy smoke. And what planet are you from, mister? This one, Inspector Turpin. My name is Double X. I am a genetically engineered empath with psychokinetic abilities. This is my colleague, Guardian. Good evening. Uh-huh. Him, I know. Get to the chase, Mr. Double X. Among my abilities is the power to read minds. Let me examine the doomsday creature. Uh, let him throw! Ah, uh, a fearsome creature. Before it was filled with rage and anger, and now, now there is nothing. Hey, forget that thing! What about Superman? Miss Laid, I monitored Superman when I arrived. I cannot pick up any brain activity at all. Damn it! Well, what does that mean? We've got to do something to bring him back! Miss Lane, if Double X says he's dead... Look, Superman is an alien. We know his body differs from ours. We owe the man more than this. Yes, you're right. Let me try mouth to mouth here. Anything? Anything at all? Oh, it's no good. His lungs are like steel tanks. Everything I've got doesn't even get a rise out of his chest. That's the trouble. His invulnerability makes an injection or IV impossible. We can try the defibrillator again. But as it is, we've nearly melted the paddles. I'm sorry, there's... there's nothing more we can do. Uh, Captain Sawyer, you can call your men off now. We'll huh? be taking over. How about some ID, mister? 
<laughs> your boys look military, but if someone doesn't lay some paperwork on me, my boys are going to shoot. Spell your guts, Polly. You a spook? CIA, Inspector Turpin? Not quite. Let's say we're on the same side, you and me. But I am authorized to take both these bodies. Over my dead body, Slick. Show me some paper on it. My agency doesn't do paper. But under Section 12 of the Executive Emergency Act, I am authorized to collect for genetic study the bodies of any alien decedents, which includes Superman and that monster. Now, Guardian, tell these people to stand back. Uh, Guardian, you work for this creep? <coughs> uh, I'm his security chief. We both work for him, Captain Sawyer. That's enough, Double X. You're not authorized to give assistance to these cowboys. Hey, pal, Miss Sawyer is a lady. A lady? I'd hesitate to call a cigar-smoking chick a lady. Now, give me your badge number. That tears it. Turpin, no, that's Westfield. He's head of the Cadmus Project. Uh-huh. Well, now the jerk's curled up sucking his thumb. Uh, you won't get away with this, Sawyer. When Washington hears about this... Washington? You think they'd be prepared to weather the public outcry if it got out we gave up Superman's body for dissection? Maggie's right. Superman's gonna get a hero's burial right here in Metropolis. Mm. And if we knew any next of kin, I guess now's the time to inform them of his death. Uh, Miss Lane, you knew Superman better than most. Who do we contact? I, uh, <clears throat> I really don't think I can help you. I'm sorry. Yes, City Hall will be organizing a funeral. If only to keep Superman's body away from those vultures. Oh, God. Jonathan and Martha Kent. How are they going to take all this? Superman himself would probably remind us to care for the many victims of Doomsday's attack. And so we do. But how could we not especially honor the man who died to save so many more? His powers and abilities were amazing. But how much more amazing was the way he chose to use those powers? For he proved that the greatest power of all is our own ability to care about and help each other. Mrs. Clinton and I also send our thoughts and prayers to Superman's loved ones, whoever they may be. Jonathan? I'm here, Martha. You don't think we should have gone to Clark's funeral, do you? Uh, heck no. It was a media circus. <laughs> you and I had just have gotten lost in that huge crowd. And if they ever found out that he had folks, had us, they'd have never left us alone to grieve. I can't believe he's gone. Mm -hmm. I feel I want to say goodbye somehow. Maybe being there would have helped. Hush, hush now. We'll say goodbye to our son in our own way. <laughs> ladies and gentlemen, ladies, ladies and gentlemen of the press, your attention please. Uh, I have a brief statement to make, which I hope will clarify a few points. It is, uh, it, yeah, gentlemen, please, ladies, it is fitting and proper we uh, mourn the passing of our friend. I'd like to announce on the city's behalf that the section of Centennial Park where he was laid to rest has been dedicated to our fallen champion, Bob Mayor Barkowitz. And, and, and on, behalf of, of my, on behalf of my corporation, I wish to announce that the building we have donated to serve as Superman's tomb will be adorned by an especially commissioned statue of the Man of Steel, entirely paid for by the next corp. Ah, he's setting himself up as chief mourner, opportunistic young... Ah, damn it, just like his old man. Any news of Kent yet, Lois? Uh, Clark? No, Perry. I think his luck ran out when Superman died. Ah, Lois, don't give up hope. There are hundreds of people missing after that monster's rampage. The phones are still in a mess. He could turn up any time. Yeah, sure. Right. There's your coverage of the funeral. I hope it makes sense. It'll be fine. You always were at your best in a crisis. Uh, what you need right now is plenty of work to take your mind off things. That's why I want you to investigate the consequences of the damage that Doomsday thing did around here. There are rumors that its fight with Superman opened up fault lines under the city, that there's a real risk of underground flooding. Yeah, sure. Um, look, i got to make a phone call, then, then I'll be on it, Perry. I want hard copy by Friday now. Hey, Olsen! One of your photos of the Doomsday fight was out of focus. Damn it, Lois Lane. Get a hold of yourself. There's the phone. Call them. They're hurting just as bad as you are. They loved him, too. Here's where the rocket that brought you to Earth crashed, Clark. 
I'll never forget how amazed I was when I looked into this crater. How any creature could have lived through that, but there you were. I reached in and lifted you into my arms. We didn't know where you came from, but we didn't care. You were ours. Martha, you want to do this? Bury in a scrapbook his little toy? I need to feel that we laid something of him to rest too, Jonathan. And this place seems right. He was the sweetest little baby in the universe. Our gift from heaven. And now heaven has taken him back. Uh, it just... It just don't seem like anything can plug the hole in our lives right now. Oh, Jonathan, what is it? No, nothing. Just my stomach acting up again. What's that? Oh, the telephone. You wait here and I'll go... To... Oh, we'll both go. Somehow we both got to learn to... Bury the past. Jeez, it's so cold in here. Cold as the grave. Quiet, quiet. Now listen. All right. Now quietly, you three. Slide the lid off that thing. Uh, quiet, you three. All right, now lift. Careful. Yeah, you got it. Right now, get it back into the tunnel. Let's go. Uh, okay. It was touch and go with so many people up overhead. We were afraid the mourners would hear the tunnel drills. I take it they didn't. Now, no one knows we're in the burial chamber. The boys just got the coffin out. The body is ours now, Director Westfield. Good. Bring it to Cadmus, pronto. Hello? Jonathan Kent speaking. Mr. Kent, uh, Jonathan, it's Lois. Oh, Lois. Who is it, Jonathan? It's Lois. Oh, that poor child. Jonathan, Martha, I just... I couldn't... I couldn't believe he was really dead. I didn't know what I could say to you. Yes, child, we know, we I know. was there. I watched him fight that thing. I watched him die. I didn't do anything but watch him die. Lois, Lois, now listen. It's not your fault. You did all you could. Everyone did everything they could. Now you've got to get on with your life. We all have. You promise you will? Promise? Well, Perry White asked me if I'd cover a story for him about the flooding under the city. I'm out researching it now. If you could hang on a day or so, give me time to file it. Sure. I'd really like to see you. We'll come to Metropolis, Lois. We'll come when you're ready, sweetie. Yeah, sure. I'd like that. Please come. Sh sure we will. That's what Clark would have wanted. That's the least we could do for you both. Oh, if only I could have helped him, Lex. Oh, love, if I could turn back time, I'd have sent you and Team Luther in to help. Superman would have owed me his very life, and I never would have let him forget it. Did you say something? Oh, I said, show me some spirit, beauty. Come on, you're my super girl. Honey, just... It took all my shape-changing skill to recover from the blow Doomsday gave me. I had to come back from a near-protoplasmic state. But I did it for you, Lex. I'd do anything for you. Just name it. Could you show me that again? The thing you can do with your appearance? My shape-shifting? What shall I become? One of LexCorp's power-dressing female executives. <laughs> or something a little more earthy. Hmm, maybe this robe is a little too revealing. Oh, yeah. I declare, I can be just about any old thing you want. <laughs> Where are you? I can even disappear completely. <laughs> Come back! <sighs> Shape changing does cause me some pain. This is the form I'm happiest with. A supergirl. I hope you are too. Oh, yeah, yeah, of course. Uh, but how do you alter your clothing that way? Oh, I guess I just give the molecules a sort of push in the right direction. Why? Oh, just curious, Beauty. I, I want to know all there is to know about you. Mm -hmm. What's that? Uh, one of the surveillance computers. This is Luther. Identify the problem. Infrared sensors registering movement in out sector 10. Show me. Surveillance camera disabled, sir. Projecting out sector 10. Heat source now moving away from point zero. Where is out sector 10, Lex? That's Superman's tomb, love. Or to be more precise, 10 meters underneath the tomb. Heat source now moving north northeast from point zero. Could he? I mean, is it possible he's alive? Ah, my dear Supergirl, it doesn't necessarily mean he's alive, but the body has definitely been moved, and I would like you to investigate it. Of course. 
Oh, it's not caused panic among those who came to pay their last respects, though. Uh, use the secret access tunnel I had installed after the funeral. And take your communications headset. Yeah. I want you to tell me what you find. Sure, I'll keep you posted. After all, one very good reason for providing Superman with a tomb is to make sure he stays firmly in it. Got her cleaned up. What do you think? You're the best, aren't you, Bessie? <laughs> Why, I, I never saw a prettier calf in my whole life. Really, Pa? Uh huh. Do you think she has a chance for a blue ribbon at the fair? If hard work and care can make a calf a winner, son, that little gal is a blue ribbon champ. Thanks, Pa. <laughs> if she wins, it will be because of you. That's because you took care of me. Son, we took care of each other. Jonathan? Hmm? Did I hear you talking to somebody out here? Huh? No. <laughs> Nobody's here, Martha. How could I be talking to anybody? Well, dinner's ready. Uh, Anyhow. Double X, what are you doing here? This is a restricted area. Guardian, it's Westfield. He's locked up in Lab 7 with an advanced study team. But that's in violation of all known protocols, even here at Cadmus. He's up to something. He set up psionic buffers all around the lab so I can't probe it. Jeez. Here, I should be able to override these secure locks. Did it. No. This is worse than I'd feared. My God. They've got Superman's body in that scanner. Guardian, leave this area immediately. This is none of your concern. None of my... You've stolen Superman's body. Commandeered a research facility and project personnel for God only knows what. You fool! My order specifically permitted me to appropriate this body. You know damn well your legal claim on this body was rendered void by the president himself. I am authorized to collect the bodies of alien decedents by... The president revoked that act in this case. As far as he is concerned, Superman was an American first and an alien second. All right. All right. But think, Guardian. Superman is dead. But we here at Canvas can recreate him, bring him to life. As you were once brought back. We've already completed the principal scans. Clone a new Superman? You can't be serious. Even if you succeed, the result wouldn't be Superman. You don't have his mind to plug into a new body. True, Guardian. But a facsimile of Superman's psyche could conceivably be simulated by recording the mental impressions that Double X absorbed from him in previous encounters. Johnson has a point, Guardian. I'm a walking example of Project Science Gone awry, but I consider my life a most precious gift. If there is a chance of success here, if we can restore some kind of Superman to Metropolis, I will help. Sheesh. Now what? Let's see. Hmm, we have an intruder moving down the service tunnel from Metropolis to the project. Somebody's found the hole we made from the tunnel into the burial chamber. Whoever it is, they're moving fast. Too fast to be on foot. The intruder is not on foot. They're flying. Lex, are you receiving me? Yeah, Mark will be well, love. Huh? Have you found anything? Well, the hole in the wall of the burial chamber led to the old city sewerage system. It's pretty much flooded out, so it took me a while to get around the damaged areas. However, I've just discovered a service tunnel running straight as an arrow out of town. And wheeled vehicles have used it in the past few hours. It's newly built. Possibly purpose-built. As soon as I find anything, I'll call you back. Now, keep me posted. I've got to go. I will, Rick. Supergirl out. Yes? Miss Lois Lane to see you, Mr. Luthor. She says it's urgent concerning Superman. Oh, really? Please show her. Mr. Luthor? Miss Lois Lane, how very pleasant to see you at LexCorp. Despite the traumatic experiences we've suffered recently... Uh, yes, I'll... unfortunately, the nightmare seems to be continuing. Oh, I'm not sure I follow you, Miss Lane. I'm doing a piece on the damage Metropolis suffered during Superman's final battle. About the subterranean flooding it caused, I thought a good place to check on the effect might be Superman's tomb. It is quite a deep excavation. Yeah, I know. We dug it. Yes. Anyhow, I bribed one of your security guards to switch off the surveillance system and let me in. Well, he'll be dismissed in the morning to continue. Quite. Well, to get to the point, Superman's body has gone, been taken by the Cadmus Project. Interesting. <laughs> Interesting? How do you know Project Cadmus is involved? I found this near the sarcophagus. Cheap flashlight. No, the symbol on it, that hourglass-shaped logo. I saw it before, on the uniforms of the men who tried to take away Superman's body after he died. Westfield's men. We've got to do something. We? You're responsible for the security of that tomb. Now, either you help me retrieve the body, or I publish this story in tomorrow's planet. I'm not your enemy, Miss Lane. 
And I doubt if you'll find that course of action necessary. Luther speaking. Lex, it's me. The situation seems to be under control. Oh, really? No opposition? Not in the least. In fact, Guardian came to meet me before I reached my destination. He returned uh, an item of value. Ah, fascinating. Oh, uh, in very fast work, love. I'm heading back. Do you want to meet me at the tomb? Oh, yeah. Oh, and I'll be uh, bringing a friend. Luther out. In heaven's name, are you doing way out here without your coat? It's freezing. For oh, land's sakes alive, put this on before they did. They've stolen his body, Martha. Honey, you know what Lois said when she called? She said she knew a way to get it back. Now, if Lois said she would, she would. Uh, I, I know, I know. But these last few days, the pain of losing him. Oh. Uh, I keep coming back here to the north pasture, to where he first came into our lives, to say goodbye. But the pain gets worse. As if my heart's fit to break. And I... Uh, uh, uh. Oh, 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 dear God. John, not you too! To be continued. The Adventures of Superman. The story continues. How could it have come to this? I don't understand it, Lex. After all this subterfuge, how come Director Westfield allowed Guardian to hand the body back to me without a murmur? I don't know, love. Maybe he got wind of the strings I pulled in Washington, threatening to cut off his funding. Maybe he'd gotten what he wanted, whatever that was. Oh, never mind. We brought Superman's remains back here where they belong. We'll have the sarcophagus lid welded shut, and this burial chamber sealed for all time. Supergirl, can I... I'd like to take a last look at his face. Of course, Miss Lane. Just pull back his gate. Goodbye. Kal-El. What's that? His Kryptonian name. There. He's at peace again now. He won't be disturbed again. Uh, if you two wouldn't mind, I'd like to be alone in here for a few minutes. To pray. You? I, I mean, of course. I'm sorry. We'll wait for you outside, Lex. Gotcha. I win. I knew I'd bury you one day. You sanctimonious, self-righteous pain. I owned this town until you came along. There wasn't a man on earth who could stop me doing anything I pleased. And if anyone interfered, they were given a one-way ticket to hell. Well, now I'm back on top. And you can't do one blessed thing about it. You're dead. You're nothing. Metropolis is mine again. And you are an empty, lifeless, withering husk. Gotcha! Jonathan Kent, you listen to me. Don't you give up. You're too blame stubborn to die on me now. Nurse! Lida Kent! Now! Oh, doctor, please! 100 milligrams coming out. I don't understand this. He's not fighting at all. His vitals are bottoming out, doctor. Breathe, Jonathan! Breathe! Jonathan! Jonathan, I'm here, hon! We're losing him. Oh, don't leave me, Jonathan, please! Clark! We're flatlining here. Jonathan? Jonathan? It's me. It's me. It's, it's me. me. It's me. Clark. Clark. Don't be afraid. Oh, no. I'm coming, son. No, Jonathan. No. Don't leave me alone. The light. So very bright. That is you. I found you. Clark. I have to go now, Pa. I have to go into the light. But she can't go, Clark. This is all that remains of Clark. These clothes. These glasses. You want to change into Superman. That's fine. Just don't go. From here on, the journey must be made by Kal-El, last son of Krypton. Go back. Rejoin the living Jonathan Kent. The voices whisper your time has not yet come. Not my time. Wait, son. Kal-El. It's not your time, either. 
I must leave you now. No! I love you, Pa. No! I'm coming to get you back! What's happening? Are you giving up on him? You can't let my husband die. Nobody's giving up, Mrs. Kent. Martha, the lidocaine should have boosted him more than this. I need to get Jonathan into a gown so I can run some more tests. He's as stable as I can get him for now, so why don't you head down to the nurse's station and get yourself a cup of coffee? Well, maybe I could use one. Martha! Dear God, is Lois, it... child, you came all the way from Metropolis? I got the first flight out. Madeline called to tell me, but... Oh, never mind. How is he? The doctors are doing all they can, Lois. But in all the years we've been together, I, I never felt so scared I was going to lose my job as, as I am now. Dear God, no, on that litter, they're carrying, it's my son, there's something wrong here. Let the dark portal admit this wandering soul. No, son, you're on the wrong path, you've got to wake up. These are my people, I have been restored to my true lineage. No, listen, look around you, look at these so-called Kryptonians. It's hard. The light blinds me. No. No. This is not how Krypton was. These are not Kryptonians. This isn't real. Let's get out of here, son. Quiet, human. Ah, can it? I don't know. I don't know if I can come back with you. Son, for once, I'm begging you not to think like an earthling. You're Kryptonian. The last of your kind. We don't know what death is for a Kryptonian soul. I I'm sorry? You can't walk into death's doorway willingly, boy. What if the only reason you're here is because we have raised you with the human concept of mortality? You've been conditioned to accept this fate, but maybe it doesn't have to be that way. Hold tight, Pa. I'll try and help you, at least. Let's do it before this pain in my chest gets any worse. Well, Martha, we've given Jonathan as much stimulant as is safe. I, I hope we... Jonathan? Mr. Kent? Oh, Martha. Lois. I made it. We both made it. I brought Clark back with me. I brought him back. Will you hurry up? Just a minute. Look, we've done enough clearing up around here. I don't want to be the victim of a drive-by shooting, that's all to say. Hey, shut up. See someone hit by one of them postmasters? Ain't nothing left but a pile of smoke and bones. Will you hush up? The thermal imager says there's a body on the head. Yeah, after a week? This building collapsed almost the minute that doomsday thing hit Metropolis. There can be someone alive down there. Damn it. It's moving. Ah, uh, debris settling ain't nothing but bodies. Oh, yeah. Let's go on. What kind of man could have survived this long under a ton of rubble? Doomsday! Where's Doomsday? Look at the size of him! Construction wagon. This place must have collapsed before it was finished. Hey, pal! Take it easy! Doomsday's dead! Superman defeated him! Superman! Superman! Superman dead! You're over a week now, big fella. Hey, you gotta see a doctor. Superman. He saved my life. Sure, buddy. Let's go, huh? I ain't feeling too safe. There's a gang territory in there. Ain't no Superman to keep things straight around here no more. No Superman? Car coming. Oh, God. Look, we got that car window. A Toastmaster. Get down. Back on this, crowd. Ah! Oh, no. Toastmaster? BG-80s? On the streets of Metropolis? Dear God, don't let it be possible. The white zone is for immediate loading and unloading of passengers only. No parking. Boys, 
Boys, over here. Harry White? Since when did you start meeting your staff at the airport? How'd you know I was returning on that flight? A good editor checks out his hunches, Lewis. I got a hot story of once one straight away. I'm parked over here. So, uh... How's Clark's father? Oh, much, much better. Good. I didn't want to leave Smallville, so I was sure Martha could cope at home. You look kind of tired, though. Are you okay? Yeah. Uh, it's nothing. Jonathan had some pretty graphic hallucinations in the hospital, and he's not stopped talking about them since then. I found it kind of disturbing after a while. Yeah. Well, and then something weird happened just now when we were coming into Metropolis Airport. A guy in the seat next to me swore he saw a flying man outside the plane. Well, there was nothing when I looked, of course, but, but for a moment there, I really began to believe that... Well, I guess I wanted to believe... The Superman was back. Uh-huh. Well, that's why I wanted to meet you off the flight today. That's the story I want you to cover. Perry, this isn't funny. Superman died in my arms. No. There was only one of them, and he's not coming back. I know. There was only one Superman, but Metropolis just hit the jackpot. Because huh? we got four Superman now, and nobody knows which of them, if any, is the real McCoy. Disengage hyperdrive. Systems check running. Infrastructure secured. Earth. Where is Earth? Target planet on forward view screen, exalted one. Weapon system? Primed and fully functional, my lord. Good. Proceed cautiously. We will not reveal ourselves yet. What the hell is that? Not me, Marty. I spent five of the past ten years in Antarctica, and I've never seen the aurora flare up like this. That lightning! Feels like the air around us is carrying a charge! I don't like this, Steve! It could be a side effect of the growing hole in the ozone layer! Possibly. What charged particles might be streaming in? It looks like that lightning storm is centered just beyond the Ellsworth Mountains! You mean where all that electromagnetic interference has been traced to? Hell, you don't believe those old rumors! It's probably all nonsense! Still, who knows what might be out there, buried beneath the ice! Has the intelligence been completely isolated? Unit 4, 8, negative, Unit 2, 0. His essence dispersed following dysfunction of the corporeal body. Retrieval has been limited to 98.073%. However, despite the loss, there is still a 79.237 chance for reconstruction. You'll notice he is now aware of his surroundings. I... I... I am... But where am I? I remember a battle. My energy fluctuation. I... I know this place. This is my fortress. But how did I get here? What am I composed of? No flesh, bone, just an energy source. If you can hear me, a mobile field effect has been created to collect and contain your essence. I am discorporate? How? If you can see the monitors, these recordings may help. Having brought down the monster, Superman was declared dead at approximately the 6 The solemn drumbeat as the world's great heroes march along in tribute. continue to visit his tomb in Metropolis' Centennial Park, where his mortal remains have been laid to rest. Enough. But we were programmed to preserve all things Kryptonian in this fortress. These were recorded for the archive. No. No. It can't end this way. The real power is in the body. I must find it at once. Sir, is it wise to go to Metropolis? This is your home. The Spirit of the Lord is with Superman. Yes, sir. Amen. 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 Get your souvenir t-shirts here. My mom visited Superman's tomb and all I got was his used cape, beanie hats, armbands. So great a distance, but without form, I travel fast as thought. Many people here visiting the tomb, but none can see me. Thus I can openly descend to the burial chamber. Oh, the chamber. I can feel 30 years of solar energy still stored within the body. Yes. Yes. Already I can touch, feel again, this cape, the cloth, the texture. I live! Wait. Embedded in these walls, surveillance systems, and a tunnel. Did someone anticipate my coming? 
no matter if it leads out. Yes, yes, it appears a blank wall. But there's a hinge. The light blinds me. But why? I have stared into the sun without pain. Something has changed within me. I am not safe here. Must return to the fortress. Document. Notes for Daily Planet feature. Reign of the Superman by Lois Lane. I've just returned from Professor Hamilton's laboratory. He believes the cyborg is the real Superman, somehow returned. I've met all four claims to Superman's title now. These notes are my attempt to work out what's going on, whether or not to accept that the man I love is dead. Okay, let's be methodical. <clears throat> Superman number one, the Man of Steel. Man of Steel coming through! Nobody moves! This is a bust! He'd been a construction worker for a short time, and before that, who knows, he had enough advanced physics to build himself an armored suit, ruster-powered boots, and a weapon which fired six-inch rivets. Where'd you get the gun? Who gave you the Toastmaster? He had declared war on the street gangs of Metropolis, seemed determined to rid the city of a new and terrible hand weapon, the VG-80 flame cannon, the Toastmaster. Uh, you ain't the real Superman. Uh, the real Superman saved my life once. I asked how I could repay him. He told me to make that life count for something. Uh, so what? So I'm gonna clean fluff like you off the streets, because he ain't around to do it himself. Superman number two, the cyborg. The death of Superman led to some interesting phenomena. A steep rise in crime, clinical depression statistics, and... Tourism. Well, they fixed this town up pretty good in such a short time, honey. Now, where do we find the Daily Planet building? Why in the heck we had to come here to Metropolis for a weekend when there were cheap flights to Niagara? I'll never know. Because I'd like to see where Superman died, that's why. Harry, in memory of Superman, killed on this spot while defending Metropolis. <laughs> Poor guy. Guess we'll never see his like again, huh, baby? Well, Hon, it's... would you look at the sidewalk instead of rubbernecking like a cheap tourist? Harry... Harry, look, up in the sky. Oh, very funny, I... Send back. Look out, his eyes. Wow, heat ray vision. He's destroying the plot. Hey, you... He's only got half a face. This Superman is a cyborg, or human, part machine. Perhaps only 35% of his body is original tissue. The rest, including a large part of the head, is composed of prosthetic metal components. The effect is... Inhuman. But, mister, you are, aren't you? Yes, I'm Superman. I'm back. Superman number three. The last son of Krypton. Help! Help! Shut up! Please! I said, shut up! Ain't nobody gonna help you. <laughs> you and me, we're gonna party, baby! <laughs> Get away from that woman. What the hell? Hell? I have seen hell, fool. Put down that gun or I will send you there. In appearance, he is identical to the real Superman, but for the black uniform and the visor which shields his eyes, suggesting a strange aversion to the sunlight which was the source of the real Superman's energy. That was the wrong decision. <laughs> Who are you? I'm Superman. Huh? He, he, you can't be Superman. He's dead. No. You are. His powers are different, and he uses them without compassion. Wear cloth. The real Superman had vowed never to take life. Oh, 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 my God. You fried him. How did you do that? My powers have changed. But do not be afraid. He can no longer harm you. We're safe. Metropolis is safe. Superman number four. Super boy. It was my first day back at the Daily Planet after visiting with Clark's folks in Kansas. Just as I decided I'd have to get used to never seeing him again. Lois, 
Good to see you back. Hi, Jimmy. Oh, hey, congratulations on your award. Thanks. Guess I'd rather have got it for something other than the pictures of Superman's last fight. Mm. Say, any news of Mr. Kent? Uh, no. Seems he's another of Doomsday's many victims. Oh, gee, Lois. And you two engaged to be married. Oh, I, I, I'm sorry. Miss Lane! Miss oh, Lane! Oh, hi, Allie. Oh, Miss Lane, I know you've been through a lot lately. I think you better get ready for... Who a... is that reading the paper with his feet on my desk? A shock. Lois, I thought we had a deal. You know, I save the world, you write it up, we both end up on page one of the planet. Who the hell? But no, no, I get page six. What story is that? Some girl got attacked in Centennial Park. Claimed a flying Superman beat up on her assailants. Yeah, they had a real change of heart. Gave me these shades and this excellent leather jacket. You know, I would have gotten rid of Doomsday, too. <laughs> was getting around to it. You... you can't be. Superman? Well, uh, let's see. Big red S on chest? Check. Fly like a bird or even a plane? Match. Super strong? <laughs> hey, my desk! No doubt about it. I'm the real Superman, Lois. Got a never-ending battle with my name on it. Superman? Superboy is more like the... Hey! Put me down! Listen, pal. Don't ever call me Superboy. Capiche? Uh, sure. No problem. <laughs> <laughs> See, he's convinced. I don't have time for this. The real Superman was at least old enough to shave. Okay, okay, you forced me to tell you. It's supposed to be a secret, but, well, I'm like a clone of Superman. Mm, not his love child. Come on, kid, this is the Daily Planet, not the National Whisper. Hey, Lois, what'll it take? Say, how about I slick back my hair and put on these glasses? What are you doing? Whoa! <laughs> Good morning, Miss Lane. Hi, Tana. Who was that? Tana Moon. She's a reporter for GBS. What's she doing here at the planet? She came to see Perry for a job. Got tired of working for Vincent Edge, I guess. Mm -hmm. But by the look on her face, I'd say she blew it. Uh, got a bear, Lois. I just seen a situation developing, and I want to handle it personally. The situation was Tana Moon. Next morning, she'd suddenly got her own interview spot on GBS, a promotion she owed to the roving eye of her guest of honor, our newest and youngest Superman. But there was something about that boy. Come in. Lois. Oh, Jimmy, I heard the Man of Steel's in action over by Suicide Slum. Tenement on fire. You up for it? Sure. Uh, Lois, another agency report just came in. Oh. Thought you should know. Know what? The body's gone. What? Superman's tomb. It was found early this morning. <laughs> Police say the body could have disappeared any time in the last few weeks. But that's impossible. I saw Supergirl put the body back in that coffin myself. Ugh. Lex Luthor equipped that place with 24-hour surveillance. 24 hours of blind type? How the hell could this have been overlooked, Harrison? Weeks go by before anybody checks this stuff, and all the time the body's long gone. I'm sorry, Mr. Luther. After we recovered Superman's corpse from those genetic tinkerers of the Cadmus Project, you assured me that security was improved. And now this? I swear Superman's as much trouble to me dead as alive. Yes. Now what? Oh, uh, I'm sorry, my dear. Good morning, Mr. Happerson. Uh, good morning, Supergirl. Lex, I heard the news. I thought you'd want me to check it out. I went to the tomb and examined it. There's no sign of a break-in this time. Maybe Superman is really alive. What? He's a Kryptonian. They're not the same as humans. My God! Could he be one of these supermen flying around the city? Surely not. But how ironic. Just as I'm intending to get one of them, all of them, on my payroll. Lex? Now, Abris, I put everyone we can spare on this. I want to know all about these claimants to the title Superman. I want to know for certain whether he is dead or alive. I want proof. Jimmy, try and get some shots of the Man of Steel in action. I'll just get this witness's details. You got it. So, Rosie, uh, what's your last name? Just Rosie. I'm clairvoyant, you know. Oh, you've had a loss recently, haven't you, dear? Quite a blow. Uh, yeah. Now, uh, you were carried out of the burning building by the Man of Steel, right? Well, I knew all along Superman would come back, and now he has. Uh, not necessarily in his own body, of course. You're talking about the Man of Steel? Why, surely you've heard of a walk-in spirit, Miss Lane. A soul so powerful it can occupy another's body. But, hey! Louise, he got you too. A walking yeah. spirit. Yeah, I think I get the idea. Lois, look out! Lady, get clear. This building's about to fall. Oh no, too late. Hold on. <gasps> Mr. Mr. Uh, Excuse me. Oh no, wait! Uh, uh, the, these other guys—they're all calling themselves Superman. So? What about you? I never said that I was Superman. Now, if you'll excuse me. Oh, oh 
or not. Except that was exactly the kind of thing Clark would have said. Okay. My stomach's relocated to my neck, apart from that. Fine. I just heard there's a light aircraft in trouble over Centennial Park. It seems the last son of Krypton's carrying it down. You up for the story? I'm breathing. Let's go. Clear this area. Make room for the paramedics. Hey, you and the cape. Hold it right there, Buster. Miss Lane. Jimmy, here's the car key. See you back at the planet. Hey, mister, we need to talk. Get us out of here. As you wish. Top of the skyscraper, As you wish. This is really like old times. Except I'm not sure who you are or what your game is. I am Superman. I am not playing a game. Superman never hid his face. He never wore black like an executioner. No. Not before. But I've been through much. I have changed. Tell me. Yes? I saw on television last night a man called Guy Gardner of the Justice League. He said he admired my working methods. Uh-huh. It gave me cause to think. I felt concerned that somebody so obviously dense should admire my tactics. Perhaps there is a better way, Miss Lane. Miss Lane? Lois. Then you know who I am. You were... An important part of my life before my passing. His voice starting to sound more like Clark, not Superman. Clark. Careful, Lois. Don't well up on this guy. I know that we were more than friends. You were engaged to marry Clark Kent. He loved you very much. He trusted you completely, even with the secret of his double life. Then you are... I am sorry. I grieve for your loss, Miss Lane. What are you saying? If it's really you, Clark... No. We must not speak of this again. Clark is gone. There is only Superman now. But wait! Dear God in heaven, if he's lying, someone learned Clark was Superman. And if he's telling the truth, I, I've lost Clark all over again. No, no, I've got to be rational. The body's disappeared. Was that... it? has been stolen again by the Cadmus Project. Surely Superboy is the result of that little exercise in creative cloning, unless unless maybe they want it for a trophy alongside Doomsday's corpse. Maybe it's time I took a closer look at that joint. Uh, this is security, uh, Director Westfield. Yes, yes. Uh, we have a perimeter alert. Uh, one fast bogey heading from Metropolis for Zoomway Alpha. A humanoid, sir, moving extremely fast. Have you scrambled the sky, Sentinels? They should be intercepting. I'm patching them into you now, sir. Uh, Jesus, he zipped straight past us. Nothing can move that fast. Nothing. You idiots. You couldn't keep the boy in. Now you can't keep a single intruder out. Alert the next wave of defense. Guardian. It's no good, Westfield. Weapons are useless. Superman. Superman. This is a cyborg. I am Superman, Westfield. I'm different due to the damage. But it's me. Give me Doomsday. Now. Doomsday is dead. You thought I was dead. Look, we're standing outside the finest security cell on Earth. He's trussed up in titanium cable. He hasn't twitched since... Since he killed me? No. The temptation will be too much for you. You will take samples, scans. You may even try to clone him. Doomsday, if war come to life, I must make him safe. I won't allow you. And not even the real Superman was powerful. I'm more than I used to be, Westfield. I'm part machine. It's child's play for me to tap into your computer to open the door. Doomsday. They never even bothered to wash my blood off you, you butcher. Will you back off, you freak? No. There's no way in hell I'm letting you remove that specimen from here. Watch me. Track him, somebody. Hey, it's no good, Mr. Westfield. He's already way out of range. Like, in outer space. Westfield, I'm flying this body into the asteroid belt. I marked out a suitable piece of rock. I'm tying Doomsday to it and attaching a warning device of my own creation. A warning device? So if anybody should attempt to remove the body, I'll know about it. Now I'm going to throw Doomsday on a trajectory out of the solar system, which will never intersect with any galaxy, star, or planet. He'll travel forever, buried in the infinite void. There! The job is done. I can return to it. It's 
short, no battery in my flashlight, but as I can tell, I should be standing right above Cadmus now. If they've taken Clark's body, I'll... Is that something overhead? I can't see between the lightning strikes. Oh my god! Clark? You are Lois Lane, the one who first named me Superman. Is that you? I, I, I only caught a glimpse in the... Oh! Oh, your face! I know I'm different. Perhaps unpleasant to look at, but it's me. But... But your body, your part machine, how did you come back? I can't remember. So much of the memory has gone, but it is me. Oh, uh-huh. Well, that's pretty convenient. Anybody can put on a blue suit and pretend to be Superman. Try and tell me something only he could know. There are snippets. Uh, a farm in Kansas. The, the name Kent. Uh, I want to remember. Uh, I want to know. You're doing pretty good so far. Look, um, have you got time to visit a friend of mine? I think he might be able to help. Spider-ply on the Superman, Hamperson. Are they for real? Which ones can we sign up? Well, the cyborg was seen this morning over Washington, D.C. Uh, there are rumors he's foiled a terrorist attack on the White House. The Superman with the eye shades is meeting out instant justice and then disappearing. The tracking station in Antarctica claims to have spotted him a couple times down there, if you can believe it. The Man of Steel won't say nothing, though we think he's found out the names of the Toastmaster supplier, and, oh, oh, it's the White Rabbit, as we suspected. And, and Tanamoon of WGBS appears to have an exclusive with Superboy. Wrong. Superboy is ours. He agreed over at dinner last night to sign with LexCorp. You got him to sign <laughs> up? I had Supergirl issue the invitation personally. When Superboy met Supergirl, his eyes nearly popped out of his head. And that's what did it. Call on three, Lex. Will you take it? In a second. Uh, Epperson, before you go, I want you to contact this white rabbit woman. Persuade her to sell the franchise on these Toastmaster weapons to us. Here's whatever means necessary. Metropolis is mine. I intend to keep it that way. Lex Luthor II speaking. Uh, Mr. Luthor, my name's Rex Leach, Superboy's agent. Ah, Leach. I've heard of you. A cheap hustler, an associate of Mr. Vincent Edge of WGBS, I believe. Well, I'm so sorry. There'll be no commission fee when Superboy signs with WLEX. No, no. Superboy's already signed with WGBS. What? You're kidding me. I never kid, Mr. Luther. Oh, and if you're looking to sign any of the other Superman, we're claiming ours as the real McCoy. And I'm issuing cease and desist notices forthwith on the pretenders. But hell, goddammit. How in the hell did you get him to sign? <laughs> Simple. My associate, Roxy, has got bigger... Eyes than Supergirl. You flesh peddler! I'll rip your arm off and whip you to death in the way! <laughs> Love to wind them up. Yes, so, Leech, where do I jump the kid? Ah, sting it! Yes, uh, you hide out at the Baker Line and the Hobbs Bay Bridge. The camera chopper will have thrown Superboy there with a story about a series of abductions. Once the kid arrives, you try to take him out. Take him out? For real? Yeah, make it look good for the cameras. Blow a few stones out of the bridge. Let it chase you a little wear you out. Run your head. Then the edge will make bail for you. And then, with the second half of the money, you retire to the Caribbean. Okay? Do I get to use the stings? Jeez! My apartment! That's to remind you to bail me out when the time comes. <laughs> sure, sure. Just don't aim that thing at people. Point it at the bridge! Well, Miss Lane, it's taken a day or two, but the test you asked me to run on the cyborg Superman have turned out some very interesting results. Yeah, I'm sorry to have bothered you with it, Professor Hamilton, but you were the only scientist Superman trusted with knowledge of his physical makeup, his abilities. When the cyborg expressed willingness to be tested, I had to come to you. I'm glad you did. He checked out in every particular. The alloys used to construct his machine half are definitely Kryptonian in nature. Hmm. As for his biological half, all DNA testing matches up with a true Superman. The memory loss he suffered may be traumatic in origin, but this is definitely a Kryptonian cyborg. Uh, has he suggested he might have been restored by the robot units in the Antarctic Fortress? Superman's Fortress? You have been there? Uh, I helped Superman defeat the Eradicator there. The Kryptonian energy field which built it. I don't know, the alloy is Kryptonian, but the engineering is different. Also, the cyborg seemed too warm, too human to embody Kryptonian attributes. No matter, though, as near as I can tell, he is Superman come back to life. Oh, yeah. That's what I was afraid of. <laughs> I'm sorry? I've met every one of these Supermen. Now, each possess a certain qualities unique to the real Superman, but in every case, no matter how strong the evidence, there's, there's something missing. I don't know what it is or, or where it is, but they just don't have it. 
This is Tata Moon with a GBS exclusive from the harbor front by Hobbs Bay Bridge Metropolis, where GBS's own sanctioned hero, Superman, on routine patrol, has been set upon by a vicious individual who calls himself the Stinger. Superman, is your headset functioning? Can you tell us how the battle's progressing? Sure, babe. Uh, Donna, I'll nail this slime ball in time for the hourly bulletin. And look who's here, our mystery supervillain guest star. <laughs> Sign in, please. I'm the Stinger. Never heard of you. That's the way I like it, Superboy. Hey, don't call me Superboy. Of course, I heard of you. Oh, I heard you were dead. I need a little help, Superboy. Supergirl. No, no. I I can take him. You're pretty good at beating up on youngsters, Stinger. Care to go one-on-one -on -one with a woman? Hmm. To say to my contract, got to scram. But here's something to keep you busy. Hey, sure shot, you missed us. You hit the bridge instead. I wasn't aiming at you, moron. Whoa, good answer. Oh, excuse me. It's rush hour. The bridge is so busy, and I gotta rush. Huh? You idiot. Those are explosive charges. We've got to disable them before the bridge... Oh, this is really happening. People are dying. The traffic's falling in the river. Come on. Somebody arranged this all. And I played along. Moving into dark side orbit of Earth's moon, my lord. At the carnage globes. Locking in target coordinates now, exalted one. Good. As yet the humans are unaware of our presence. Study their planet well, for Superman is no longer alive to protect it. And you may be the last living beings to view it in its unaltered state before we transform it into the second war world. The Master's Regeneration Matrix is experiencing overload. Shut down all solar receptors. They are off, but the overload continues. There must be a release. Agreed. There is no other choice. Modulate the support field. Lower the matrix to release position. A region of these shores have supplied. This is without precedent. Everything which has occurred since the Master's discorporation has been without precedent. We were programmed to improvise in uncertain situations. Onward! The Matrix seal has ruptured. Prepare to receive occupant. <gasps> he awakes. Dim the light in his eyes may yet be sensitive. Lois? Oh, Doomsday. Is he dead, Lois? Master. Who is there? It's so dark. Master, how do you feel? Oh, fuzzy headed. These clothes. Not my uniform. Do you recognize us? Do you know where you are? Uh, you're Fortress Robots. Then I'm in the Antarctic. The underground hideaway? Correct. Master, you seem unsteady on your feet. Uh, oh. uh, I'm, I'm weak as a kitten. Allow us to seat you. Thank you. Is there anything else you require? A way in which we may be of service? Yes. You can tell me what's been going on. At once, sir. I'm not sure if I have the strength to do anything about it. But I have the feeling I've been away too long. This is Neil Watts, live for WLEX from Coast City. Our news chopper is circling the impact crater on the edge of town where two of the four supermen who appeared in Metropolis after the death of the city's costumed hero appear to have crashed to Earth. The armored figure known as the Man of Steel and the black clad visored one who calls himself the last son of Krypton. Minutes ago, these two were reported brawling in Metropolis. We're trying to move in... Not now, now, damn it. Mr. Haverson's here, Mr. Detroit. Yeah, send him in. Lex, the Superboy managed to clear up the mess he made at Hops Bay Bridge with Supergirl's help. Nobody drowned. And then it's been confirmed that the cyborg did foil a terrorist attack on the White House. Tomorrow's front page will have him and the president shaking hands, so he's the real Superman as far as Clinton's concerned. Yeah, yeah, and yeah. Take a look at this, Apperson. Why? What? Like thousands of viewers, I'm asking myself, what are these two doing in California? And what is this fight all about? <laughs> <laughs> I must kill you, Man of Steel, for apparently death alone will convince you that I am the one. You want me to believe you're Superman? Then act like Superman. 
You are the pretenders. I am the one, the only, the Superman. What will you do? Fry everyone wearing this shield to prove it. No. I... I, I would not. The cops around here are slow. But we want to leave before they get here. I... I have been blind. I have felt it for a long time now. There must be more to Superman than power. Yes. Yes. Go back to Metropolis, Man of Steel. That city will be in good hands. There is work for a Superman here in Coast City. Perhaps I can make a new start. Well, I'll be damned. Get our news chopper at Coast City. Have him ferry the Man of Steel out to the airstrip. Get him on the next next hour flight back here. At once, Mr. Luthor. Oh, tell me that again, Amos. His real name is John Henry Irons, a physicist, a genius. Skipped out on his military contract after designing the BG-80 hand weapon, uh, the Toastmaster. Uh, once he saw the street gangs in Metropolis using him, he came out of hiding, built himself this armored suit, decided he would play Superman and declare war on the gangs. <laughs> it seems he's succeeding. Our intelligence suggests the Toastmaster supplier, uh, codename White Rabbit, has been permanently put out of action. Yeah, yeah, I've heard that. And her warehouse arsenal destroyed. I thought you wanted the rabbit out of the picture in Metropolis. Well, sure I did, but not before I had the key to her operation, damn it! Uh, the key? A Toastmaster, you idiot! How can I control the gangs if I don't control their ordnance? Now take these to Weapons Division and move your butt! <laughs> what are they? Blueprints! I managed to salvage them, you dingo! Uh, I'm, I'm sorry? These are the plans for the BG-80. Now the stockpile's been destroyed, I'm gonna have to build my own Toastmasters, aren't I? Now move it, you useless weenie! Now what? Max. We've got something coming in off our communication satellite cameras. What, another hurricane brewing up in the Gulf? No, not the cameras pointed at Earth. The ones pointing into space. Attention to number three. You got it. What the hell is that? The size of it. Could that be a space vessel? <laughs> it's bigger than Long Island. Whatever it is, I don't like it. Scanners show we have been detected, my lord. One of their orbiting devices is relaying visual information as to our presence. Destroy it! I'll not have them alerted to my purpose. By your command, Lord Mongol. God! What the hell was that? Where's it going? We didn't get much telemetry information as to the ship's course, Lex. But it seems pretty likely it's headed for Coast City, California. What? That's where the Dark Superman is. The, the last son of Krypton? Yeah, he's there now. And so is... Status report in the Man of Steel. Is he still in Coast City? No, Mr. Luthor, sir. Our chopper transferred into Lex Air's scheduled Metropolis flight a few minutes ago. He's airborne. Shall I have them turn back? No, uh, no, no. We might need him here. Lex? I was in the monitoring room. Did you see that starship? It blasted our satellite to pieces. Oh, uh, yeah, Perhaps Supergirl should investigate for us, Lex. Sure, I can take a look-see and report back. No problem. No problem? No problem? Mm, I don't know what this thing is. But I think it might be politic to let it make the first move. White House to Superman. White House to Superman. Is this thing working? Can you hear us? Superman here. Yes, I'm receiving you. One of the advantages of my cyborg physiognomy is its communication circuitry. That's why I built you that transceiver. So that I can always be on call. We have a situation developing. A large alien craft headed for Coast City. Origin and purpose unknown. I'm on my way. Be there in a couple of minutes. You may have some help. One of the others... One of the fake supermen is in Coast City right now. I'm aware of that, sir. It could be a coincidence, or it could also be that this imposter who claims my name is leading these aliens in some kind of attack. We have arrived at the point to zero alpha, my lord Mongo. But not before time. If I lead a new wing behind a schedule like this, he'd have you fried. Uh, yes, my lord. Alert the drop crews. Stabilize the ship in position over the city. In position now. Carnage loads primed and ready. If we launch them from here, we'll achieve even dispersal over a radius of 85 kilometers from zero point. Good. Set the globes to detonate 90 seconds after my mark. Programming complete, my lord. Stand by for drawings. Superman! Are you Superman? I am the last son of Krypton. Uh, I'm captain of this precinct. Our commissioner wants to know what that thing is over Coast City. There's panic in the streets. Try and calm the populace. I will... My god! We're being bombed! No. 
Those aren't bombs. Whatever they are, I'm not waiting to find out. This is Precinct 1325. Give the evacuation order. What is it? Why is it doing this? You don't know? Cyborg. I thought you were in Washington, D.C. You made a mistake, last son of Krypton. A mistake? Coming here to Coast City. A big mistake for you. Being here just as this ship arrived. Just as this all began. Proving you are responsible for what is to take place here. Responsible? This has nothing to do with me. So you say. What are you doing? There's work to be done. And I must reconfigure this cybernetic arm to achieve my purpose. The metal that shapes itself into something familiar. I don't know who or what you are. Ray Rao, a Kryptonian disruptor. But as you go to your grave, there's something you should know. Wait. You will be blamed for the deaths of millions. Ah! Initial shockwave dissipating, my lord, Mongol. Move into the next phase. Quickly. The leader will be joining you shortly. Releasing the seeds, exalted one. Construction now underway. All units buried within the explosion crater by the carnage globes have leaked and are synthesizing mineral deposits present in the soil according to their programming. Underground foundations for engine city extending down now to a depth of 100 meters. Superstructure now rising over an area exceeding 160 square kilometers. How long till construction is complete? At this rate of progress, five hours, Earth time. Five hours? We are behind schedule, Mongol. Great leader. Forgive me. We shall make haste to fulfill your instructions. Indeed you shall. Once we have reshaped Coast City as a planetary propulsion unit, Metropolis will follow. Before long, everything will be in place. You will no longer need to impersonate the man you despised. Far enough, Doomsday. Metropolis is where I draw the line. Yeah, gonna get you this time, bonehead. <laughs> Superman, you're bleeding. Hey, just a scratch, Lois. Stay back, Miss Lane. I can defeat this hot. Ah! I win. I win. Ah, uh, I'm toast I win. again. I win. Next time I get to be Doomsday. Ah, oh, nuts. Yeah, what? Super Bowl. Uh, Superman. Tana. Where are you, man? Our first date and you stand me up, man. I got my best colors on and I cleaned up the big S on my leather jacket. If the original Superman was still alive, he'd be proud to have me for a clone. Uh, you haven't been watching the news? You don't know? What's to know? I've been practicing these cool video games my manager got for me. You met him yet? Rex Leach. He's a great... He's a first-class slime. Now listen, forget your damn games. Forget the date. Something terrible's happened out at Coast City. Uh, nobody's sure exactly what, but there's an ash cloud the size of China blowing east, and millions of people may have died. It's real scary. Whoa. Hey, don't be scared. You're talking to Superman here. Truth, justice, and mom's apple pie. If WGBS want me on the case, load a tape in the camera, and I'll fly you super speed to California. We can make the next bullet. No. Forget the news coverage. WGBS have been manipulating you through Leech. Setting up situations so they could cover your heroics live on TV and improve their ratings. Huh? Back up, back up. Y you mean I'm being played for a sucker here? Uh, that's about right. Even by me, I guess. Whoa, that thing at Hobbs Bay Bridge. Those people who nearly drowned. That was a setup? Please, I'm so sorry. I should have known. I was so blind. Well, guess I should be a little P.O.'d at you, Tana. But I have a feeling it's not your fault. Listen... This is for real. Coast City's gone up in smoke. Yeah, I doubt Rex Leach could stage this size of emergency. I better do what the man in blue used to do. Huh? I don't understand. Donna, this is a job for Superman. Well, yes, but... Up, Super up, and I'm out of here. Please, be careful. Daily Planet Newsroom. Yes, ma'am. Lois, here are the proofs of your supplement feature. No, thanks, Ellie. Just stick them on the pot. Look, I gotta tell you, you look tired. You're here way late most nights. It's not good for you, you know. Oh, yeah. I thought burying myself in work might help me get over losing Clark, but 
seems to have had the opposite effect. Sure. This old building's pretty lonely when you're alone here in the small hours. Yeah. And I nearly got the scare of my life when I heard a tapping outside the office window last night. Tapping? On the 50th floor? It was a bird. Hey, Lois. Uh, you going to lunch today? Yeah, see you later, Jimmy, at the deli. Okay. It had got itself trapped between the windows. Well, I let it go, but the noise shook me up. <sighs> like it could have been Superman or something, as if he was still with us. Oh, but then I guess Clark would be too. What? Oh, sorry, Lois. I, I just wish Doomsday had never happened. All those people who went missing would still be with us, like Clark, and Superman would still be alive. Yeah. Yeah. I still don't know how I function from day to day. Well, maybe the shock hasn't hit me yet. Maybe it's every week brings yet another crisis. And how? Like this Coast City business. Do we know yet for sure what's happened out there? Well, the latest we have from California is that some kind of live news agency TV hookup is being patched together with a cyborg Superman who's apparently assessing the situation. Oh. Rumor has it that a huge area of the city has been leveled. We're expecting pictures any minute. Oh, yeah. Look on the TV. Ooh. Gosh, that the Coast City gives me the creeps. Hey, uh, turn the sound up, will you? Arrived here three hours ago. The visored imposter to my name, the one calling himself the last son of Krypton, destroyed this city. I was too late to stop the carnage, and he is still at large. That is why I have given instructions that an exclusion zone be placed around the disaster area, until such time as I can apprehend the Kryptonian and guarantee safe passage for the rescue teams. So no one gets in or out unless the cyborg says so? Luckily, I have an ally to assist me in tracking down the perpetrator of this catastrophe. Oh, the kid's out there, too? Hey, don't worry, folks. There's two of us looking after the situation now. We'll nail the fake Superman. No sweat. You'll forgive my young colleague's enthusiasm. But then, I was as sure of my powers at his age. What? Lois, something wrong? Yeah. Yeah, something's wrong. The real Superman didn't have any powers at Superboy's age. They didn't appear until he was an adult. I don't get it. And the cyborg told me himself he couldn't remember his childhood. Something's not right, Allie. For some reason, I didn't believe a word those two said. You can't be the real Superman. You'll never know, Superboy. How did you make that TV broadcast? I reconfigure my arm to interface with this ship's imaging computer. Like this. Whoa. Whatever. And whatever I want the world to see, they see. From the plausible to the absurd. Hello, friends. Oh, gross. Everything's cool. We've saved all the innocent people in Coast City. And that half-meat, half-metal Superman is the real McCoy. Check it out. Better not broadcast that one, big guy. You got my hair wrong. Heck, you'll never get away with this. Who is there to stop us? I'm giving it plenty of thought, believe me. While you're at it, think on this! Ooh! Dead. <laughs> no, unconscious. Good. The Kryptonian was a problem which required a permanent solution, whereas you may come in useful for spare parts, if nothing else. What is it, Mongo? The construction of Engine City is complete, Great Leader. And the Carnage missile is targeted on Metropolis. I'm on my way. <sighs> Spare parts? Is that gruesome or what? Do we hang around and find out what this means? No. Do not. If there's one thing escaping from the Cadmus Project taught me, it's how to disassemble a set of restraints. Guess being Superman helps a little, too. Ooh. I sure wish I had a little more invulnerability, though. That guy's a heavy hitter. Now, which way to sneak out? Down through Engine City or up to the roof? Uh, I think that air duct mover overhead decides it for me. Lex, you've got to let me go to Coast City. Something's very wrong. And do what? There are two supermen there as it is, and nobody's any the wiser. Metropolis needs its Supergirl now more than ever. Well, that's what you said to keep me here when Superman went up against Doomsday alone. Oh, you think I'm making things up? No, I... Aberson? Mr. Luther? Would you kindly repeat the information we received earlier for the benefit of Supergirl? Our geostationary satellite over the Atlantic has picked up something traveling along the seabed incredibly fast. Uh, we sent a small submersible down to get some kind of video image. Uh, what we got back is pretty grainy, but seems to depict...
detect a powerful robot of some kind, traveling in a perfectly straight line, pretty much. What is it? Where has it come from? Some sketchy reports from a U.S. Antarctic base suggest something like it was seen marching across the tundra before it walked straight off an ice cliff into McMurdo Sound down there. And its current heading? On this heading, from which it's yet to deviate, it'll arrive within an hour at Hobbs Bay Metropolis by the airport. You still think you should be in Coast City, Supergirl? I'll get straight down to Hobbs Bay, Lex. Don't worry. The Antarctic? What could be coming from down there? Unit 380, there is an energy field burrowing down through the ice shelf toward us. Arm the security systems. The master would not wish his fortress's secrecy compromised. The flux signature is weak but familiar. I would predict its point of entry to be consistent with the emergency access tunnel furnished by the Eradicator when he built this facility. Ah! Ah! Quickly, my power is ebbing. A disruptor blast almost destroyed me. Get me to the regeneration matrix. Hurry! Sir, that will now be impossible. It is empty. The occupant was removed. No! No, it is the source of my power. You must restore the egg. Put the body back. Sir, we cannot obey that instruction. The master insisted. Great Rao! I am your master! I am the last son of Krypton! Sir, as the Eradicator, you created us, but the last son of Krypton emerged alive from the regeneration egg. Uh, the body lives. We equipped him with the Kryptonian battlesuit to protect him on his journey back to Metropolis. But he cannot prevail. Not against an evil such as I have encountered. We must find a way to restore my strength before... before... Unit 38, have we sufficient power to regenerate this body? It is possible, but now the Master lives again. Is it wise to revive the Eradicator? We are programmed to preserve all things Kryptonian, regardless of the consequences. Perry, I'm not arguing with you, but I'm gonna beg, borrow, or steal a plane ride to Coast City, or what's left of it. There's more of a story here than we're being let in on. Besides, Superboy's there with Cyborg, and I've just seen the Man of Steel here at the airport looking for a flight out there himself. Supergirl's just arrived, too. Something's going on down by the river. The Man of Steel's over there, too. There's something coming out of the water. I gotta go! Supergirl, I'm the Man of Steel. What the hell is that thing? Nobody knows, but it walked here from Antarctica. And after what Doomsday did to Metropolis, I'm not prepared to take chances. Sure didn't seem to feel that psychokinetic punch I threw at it. It's like the relics. Now what? Wait, don't attack us. Look, if I didn't know better, a Superman once told me of some kind of Kryptonian battle armor he had, sort of a memento. What I mean is, well, this is how he described it. Are you saying that mother's got something to do with a real Superman? You better, you better hope so, because otherwise we're in trouble. Superboy, you were in Coast City. I escaped, and it ain't Coast City anymore. Quiet, everybody, that robot, armor, whatever it is, it's opening up. The cyborg! He's the bad guy! He's in league with an alien called Mongol! There's a giant rocket engine where Coast City used to be, and Metropolis is the next target! Over my dead body! Wow! Is it really you? Mark! Everybody stand back. That's not Superman's uniform. We don't know who or what this guy is. I am Superman. And I'm back. Lois. Uh uh. Not another one. Yes, I know about these others and what's been going on. But first, Lois, I must speak to you. Not so fast, pal. Ah! My arm! You're hurting me! You can't be Superman. The real Superman wouldn't have felt that. Oh. I've had a lot to recover from. My powers aren't back yet. That's why I had to use that Kryptonian battlesuit to get me here. Man, if it's really you, oh, we just gotta talk, dude. We've got to act, and we haven't much time. But first, Lois... A minute over by this hangar. It's lame. Yeah, it's okay. Lois, it really is me. Don't you recognize me? I'm sorry, I, I just don't know anymore. <sighs> Did the others remind you how he gave you Ma's ring for our engagement? Or, or, or about the time I told you I was really Clark? Or about that rainy day in July when we... Clark, Clark, if you're alive, tell me how. You were dead, how could you have come back? I, I don't know. I woke up in the fortress. My powers haven't returned. But I've been monitoring what's happening in Coast City. 
I've got to mold these people here into a team. We've got to take out Mongol. Are you crazy? You're no stronger than I am. That cyborg's killed millions of people, and he's wearing my uniform, my shield. It's up to me to do what's necessary to get it back. Oh, Clark. Lois, I'll always love you. But right now, I've got to get to Coast City. And with the power cells and the battle suit all but drained, I'll need to hitch a ride. Hey, kid! Man of Steel! Supergirl! It's Council of War time! The Kent's farm? Martha? Oh, Lois! We saw! We saw on the news! Is it him? Is it really Clark this time? It's Clark, Martha. As near as I can tell, it is. What is it, honey? You sound troubled. He's headed for Coast City, with the armored man and the kid. He's gonna have to face that Mongol thing. But his powers haven't returned yet. Oh, dear Lord! You mean we could lose him all over again? Please, God, don't let it happen twice. It couldn't happen twice! But they say Coast City's turned into a giant rocket motor. That the same thing could happen to Metropolis. If Superman's really back, we need him like never before. That's what I mean, half a single stupid dad! I want him to defeat this damn cyborg and save the blasted planet! Oh, right. For a minute there, I thought you wanted him dead. Of course I want him dead! But I choose the time. I choose the place. I... Deliver the blow. Metropolis engine bomb warhead armed. Missile countdown commencing. 30. Crush Metropolis, just as we crushed Coast City. Within hours, another engine city will be constructed on the ashes. And we will blast this planet out of its solar system. A new war. 27. Uh, uh. Yes, my dear. Your boasting begins to tire me, Mongol. Through your crew's incompetence, the boy was allowed to escape. Yes, my dear. But I can promise you, here on, everyone will see this plan. Really? Then you have taken steps to deal with the intruders? Intruders? What intruders? According to the central control computer, three of them are fighting their way into the complex. My sensors have picked up the Man of Steel, Superboy, and a Kryptonian life form. They're nearing the bomb silo. That's impossible. How could the security system have failed? The Kryptonian may be the original Superman. All the readings match up. Deal with it. Sand defense units down to the missile silo. Yes, Lord Mongol. We'll never stop the countdown. This is boiling with alien troops. With traps on this, we can break out. These are aliens. They're defense robots. Oh. They're good shots, too. Stay close, Super Dude. You've got no invulnerability, remember? No power is true. But these weapons racks give me an idea. I'd like to used to call me the world's biggest boy scout. I guess I'll follow the scout's motto. Be prepared. Whoa, nice shoot, cowboy. Let's move out. Which way? Corridor walks over here. Left. That's right. Let's try left. It's wider. Around this corner. Quick. Oh, Time. Oh, Mama Sita. Look at the size of that pistol. It's oh, a metropolis engine bomb. No wonder it's quiet over here. It's about to lift off. Come on. If we don't move out, we'll be fried. Let him do it. Coming up behind us, guys. Any ideas? Uh huh? There's a door. Oh, Let's lock. Stand back. Quick, get here! Is it too late? Come on, quick, got it! Wait a second. Where's the kid? He's still out there! My Lord Mongol, the engine bomb has been successfully launched on course for Metropolis, but there appears to be a passenger. What? Put it on the screen. It's Superboy. Looks like he must have decided to, uh, get to ride home. Superman, so you are alive. Quick thinking for a youngster, wouldn't you say, Mongol? He'll be dead very shortly when that missile impacts on Metropolis, and I move a step closer to converting this planet into the new War World. I remember the time I spent as your prisoner on the original War World. I had no intention of letting you turn this planet into another one. Rest assured, your planet is doomed. And so are you! Pain? That's such a feeble one. Your powers have deserted you. How convenient. I kill you now. Render you permanently dead. 
This is Tana Moon reporting from the roof of the WDBS building in Metropolis. As the minutes tick away before death comes like thunder out of a clear sky, because with the first accurate reports of what has really happened in Coast City, we have also learned that a huge missile is targeted on us. And we now pray for a miracle. Jeez, knew I should have had a plan when I jumped aboard this thing. Ah, uh, let's take a look under this inspection hatch. Wow, must be hundreds of thousands of wires, but which one screws up the guidance system? How feeble you are, Superman. Returning from the grave hasn't improved you at all. That's enough, Mongol! You get the punch I couldn't give Doomsday! Supergirl? I'm sorry I took so long. There was a lot of security gear to sabotage. You got us through just fine. With your shape-changing skills, your visibility was the perfect secret weapon. Where's the Man of Steel? Looking for the cyborg. Whoever he may be. I am here with your Man of Steel. Dear God, what have you done to him? Uh, I'm okay. You are not a Krypton. Disgrace that shield and uniform. You stole them from me as surely as you stole the materials from which you built that body. You know that guy, Superman? Yeah. His name is Henshaw. He was a space shuttle pilot aboard the Excalibur. The one that crashed a few years back? But he died. No. The accident created a million to one chance. My intelligence, my being, passed into the ship's computer. I learned how to fashion a new body for myself. Out of scavenged materials, organic or otherwise, I survived. And then, you betrayed me, Superman. Yes. You scavenged anything you could lay your hands on to build yourself a body, including relics of Kryptonian technology and biological data on my cell structure. You would have used it against innocent people. You banished me when I had done no wrong. It was that, or fight you to the death. And I have vowed not to take life. <laughs> I should have known your thirst for power would lead you to join up with an opportunist like Mongol. But like the cowards you are, you waited till I was dead before you made your move. Strange. I adopted this disguise in order to win the trust of those who respected you. If I couldn't destroy you, I could at least destroy your reputation. Now, I can do both. This plate covers the raw material that powers this reactor. Great Scott! An asteroid of 99.998% pure kryptonite. This is the radiation drainage nozzle. No! Don't open it! Oh! Ah! Let me add that muscle! No! No, stay back! The radiation would kill you! Ah! Say goodbye to Superman, everybody! Looks like he and Metropolis are about to strike out together! Darn it! I ripped a thousand components out of this missile, and it hasn't deviated an inch off course! I've got seconds to come up with a miracle! The missile is clearly visible now from the roof of the WTBS building. As you can see from the picture, it's speeding towards us, getting bigger every second. Are we staring death in the... Wait a minute. There's a tiny figure riding on the nose cone of that thing. It is my only chance of saving Metropolis is to give this thing a darn good push and hope I can repeal the law of physics. Here goes! Uh, he's pushing against it. Oh, it's swinging around. It's headed for the bay. Did it? Superboy, save Metropolis. But at what cost? The Metropolis kid give his life to save ours. <laughs> my jacket! I put a rip in my jacket, man! The final showdown, and I look like a dweeb. Henshaw, for pity's sake, turn off the kryptonite radiation! No! This will not be tolerated! What the hell? It's the last son of Krypton! No! The last son of Krypton lives! I am the Eradicator, programmed to preserve all things Kryptonian. Oh, please! You've got to help him! Eradicator? 
The Force Superman? Your death awakened me, Kal-El. Your body was not beyond repair. Your unique Kryptonian physiognomy had stored solar energy which I combined with mine in the fortress. It was this which ultimately brought you back and gave me physical substance, which I can now place between you and the Kryptonite. Get out of my way! No, I will absorb the radiation to preserve my master. But the radiation's passing through you! It's still affecting Superman! Supergirl, the colors are different. As it hits the Eradicator, it's green. But he's still... The rays hitting Superman are blue! What do you mean? The Eradicator's physical mass is somehow reversing the polarity of the radiation, which means it has an opposite effect on Superman. He's actually drawing the power off of that asteroid, draining it! No! No! You will die! Forget it, Henshaw! I'll tear you to pieces myself! Fine. You asked for it? Oh! Holy cow! One punch took that cyborg apart! Uh, but what a punch! Whoa! Looks like I just missed a party! Superman! Your powers have returned! Uh, never felt better. Though I wish I was back in my uniform and cape. Oh. But I can at least repossess my cape from this junk pile. Uh, and so I won't be needing that anymore. Here, let me help with the rest of your outfit, Superman. I can shift the molecular structure of this Kryptonian garment so it transforms into the blue, red, and gold of Superman. Check that threads! No. I have some urgent business to attend to. Think you folks can take care of the Eradicator for me? No problem, Superman. Look who you're asking. Hmm, a room full of Superman. Uh, I never said I was Superman. And hey, babe, I'm not Superman. That's Superman. Up, up, and away. So we await the news from what was Coast City. We wait and we pray that good will come of this evil, that truth, justice, and the American way can prevail. Because in our hearts, when cynicism is driven out by fear, we look for heroes. We look for heroes. God, if this is a bird... Lois? Oh, thank God. You want to come flying? Oh, yes, please. Forever. You got it. Faster than a speeding bullet. More powerful than a locomotive. Able to leap tall buildings at a single bound. Look, up in the sky. It's a bird. It's a plane. It's Superman. You've been listening to The Adventures of Superman to Doomsday and Beyond, starring William Hoopkins, Lorelai King, Vincent Marzello, Carrie Shea, Leon Herbert, Garrett Hagan, Liza Ross, Eric Myers, Bill Roberts, and Tanika Fairman, with Stuart Milligan as Superman, the character created by Jerry Siegel and Joe Schuster, and special guest star Burt Kwok, based on stories by Roger Stern, Dan Juergens, Louise Simonson, Carl Kiesel, and Jerry Ordway, edited by Mike Carlin and published and copyrighted by DC Comics. Technical realization was by Paul Dealey. The program was adapted, written, and directed by Dirk Meggs.